David Praise Lynn, how are you? Hey, man, it's awesome to be here. Praise the Lord. Just give God the glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. He died on the cross and he wants you to be used of him and be filled with his spirit. That's all I got to say there. Man, Praise God. Good to be I'm here. excited, bro. Everyone's been waiting for this. I feel such an anticipation. I'm like, this has been a long time in the making. I knew I was just, you know, when it was God's right timing, we were going to connect and get together. I know there's everybody spamming. You guys have broke my chat because you guys are all typing so much saying hype. Oh, this is crazy. Amazing. But man, it is awesome just to get together to hear your story, what God's done with you. And I just want to say this before I told him before we got on here, like I really want tonight to just be a dialogue of me and him talking, talking about what God is doing, his testimony and what he sees happening in the nation and 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 I want to say what everyone's asking about please tell us about what's going on with you your YouTube channel the new platform that you've launched I know that you're facing intense censorship as you have in the past as well but just give us maybe a little background about what you've been going through I know you posted a video on YouTube all your videos are taken down so maybe just catch us up on that situation yeah, basically, they've been attacking us hard, especially since I got arrested for the gospel twice, I ticketed a few times. And um, it seems over the last year and a half, they've been really targeting us. I, I've been uh, censored on every platform. Um, my my subscriber base has been capped. My followers have been capped. Um, I've been shadow banned, uh, you know, so but yet the gospel still goes out somehow. People are uh, getting set free, delivered, healed and saved and inspired to go on the streets. But over the last couple of months, I've noticed that they've been going hardcore. They're going back to old videos, private videos. So mm. I just want to let everybody know that even if you have a private video, uh, at least for me, they're going into your private videos and striking me. They, still, they might strike you, even if you have something private, uh, unlisted videos, they were starting to strike it. We all of a sudden they just disappeared off of our channel. And um, we it got to a point where more than once we got two two strikes and they were about to give a third and we were doing everything we could because we have a our platform has many people using it. We have 24 okay. churches, everybody access to it. So we got live streams going, church sermons going. Uh, edited videos going and and we don't censor we say we say everything the bible says we're bold about it we're not ashamed about it um and so they've been just targeting us taking up even old videos and uh, uh so we we took a pause for a bit it's like wondering what we could do and i was trying to say okay maybe you know what let's let's try to say the same thing in a, in a more wiser way because now they're just you know no holds barred and so it seemed to work for a bit and then all of a sudden uh they came out of nowhere. I mean, we were, we were trying our best to follow all the community guidelines, but yet still be true to our faith. Um, obviously, you know, certain key words that cause people to be censored. And, and, and I don't even need to, I don't, I don't want to get you in trouble there, yeah. I, Isaiah. Um, but uh, they just started uh, hitting me one strike. Okay. I thought, okay, two strikes. And then in the middle of the two strikes, third strike. And the way it works with YouTube, three strikes, you're out. The good thing is, is that we got our third strike in the probation period and the three strikes came like almost day mm. after. Day. So I knew and I was telling some people, OK, it's it. You know, CFM's channel is going down. They're going to take us down. We got some wisdom from somebody in our ministry that said, you know what? They're taking down your videos and we've had many videos taken down. They're about to take down the entire channel why don't you just take down all your videos and so they have nothing to strike so at least use this as an opportunity so that so that you can now come off the platform and and i don't know what's going to happen they, they might find another reason to take our channel down so that's what we did um they took down some videos we decided to take all of all the videos down and, and just kind of get off the platform so we started a new platform called micdropvideo.com uh, so technically our channel's still up. However, there's no videos right now because we had over almost eight to 10,000 videos. And I was absolutely sure that they were going to find something between talking about Islam, talking about homosexuality, talking about uh, the, the government, whatever it is, they're going to find something absolutely the way they were going. So it, it's either we took that move or they were just going to remove us. Um, and so, Technically, we're, we have the channel, but no videos. We're pushing people to our own platform. 
Uh, I don't know what we're going to do right now with the CFM channel. We have a, a decent subscriber base. So that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Uh, I mean, uh, we've been targeted. I, you know, I know you, you've been targeted. I, we were talking on Facebook. Uh, Facebook seems to have a little more grace to let you back on. YouTube just cancels you altogether. So, so yeah, that's kind of what's happening. It's a difficult situation because we're the only group that's not allowed to say anything. Any other religious group, any other sect of society can say whatever they want about Christians. They can mock us. They can make fun of us. They could post Netflix series of Jesus being, you know, homosexual or whatever. And the moment Christians speak out against anything, we're considered haters. We're considered bigots. We're considered hate speech. I got, I got banned on Facebook for saying, this is why Christians are lazy. And they said, oh, you're giving hate speech towards Christianity. I was like, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian creator. But, you know, we're living in this generation. And, man, it's it's so crazy, this cancel culture, because you can't say anything. It's so weird that literally anything you say is considered hatred, is considered negative, and you could get canceled over anything. And, you know, honestly, in the last week, I've had to pray because I've probably shouldn't have done this, but I've been reading, you know, a lot of comments of people's videos calling me false or this or that about all the dumbest reasons. I believe in miracles, so I'm false. I believe in tongues, so I'm false. I believe in the gifts of the spirit, so I'm false. I believe, and what happens when you start reading negative comments or people that are speaking or, or don't like you or think you're a false teacher is you start becoming reserved in your preaching. So now you want to preach the bold word of God, but in the back of your head, you're going, well, if I say this, they're going to make a video about me. If I say this, they're going to take my page down if I say this I'm gonna get a strike if I say this so you 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 literally can't preach the gospel that Jesus wants you to preach and this week I feel like the Lord said Isaiah stop reading comments stop watching videos of people that don't even know what they're talking about they're obviously lying on you so why are you reading because it's going to hinder what I want you to say and I really believe man we're we're facing that era now where I'm even going like man Lord I need to start working on something or doing something because at any moment they could pull the plug on every Christian creator and you I mean you've spent years and years and years building your channel. I've spent the last three years uploading every single day. Like, man, it, you know, it's full time work and work and work. And then all of a sudden these companies can just take it in a moment. And so I think we definitely, what you're doing with your own platform, creating your own site, putting your videos there is super crucial because I mean, right now we know the Bible says the devil is the God of this world. Lowercase G, obviously he's the prince of the power of the air. I just, I'm always telling people the devil's not in hell. The devil's roaming like a lion. He's on the earth. He's alive and well, he's working in government. He's working in social media. And so I think it's crucial that we do this because I think it's going to get a lot worse. So guys, if you're not on an email list from my side, or if you're not on David Lynn's page, if you're not on these websites that we're creating now, if you guys don't go to these websites that we're creating then you're not helping the cause like if we're going to put the work in the time and the energy in as the church we need to support these other platforms these other places i even know like i don't know if you've heard of rumble but i've seen now a lot of people are going over to rumble the ceo basically said hey christians are welcome over here we won't cut shut you down we won't take your stuff down so i thought maybe i should just upload even like all my stuff there to think about but man i love that you've created your own what do you feel like as far as like christian creators do you feel like we're years away from things being taken down do you feel like we're i mean is it just a matter oh, of time or you know, it's, it's uh there is another uh uh street preacher in canada toronto uh dory love uh he used to be with our ministry many years ago he branched out on his own is doing his own thing almost a day or two after i posted that video he, he got his whole channel taken down and wow. uh he's another influential street preacher there's a couple other street preachers that had their channels shut down. I, I you know, I, I want to say something for the record. Um, what I've observed in my 27 years of ministry is that it's those who are casting out demons. I'm going to say mm, that. Go ahead. Those who cast out demons, those who trample on the, the devil's territory, which really belongs to the Lord, the, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. Those who pull people out of the mire, those who are on the front lines, those who are stepping out in faith to lay hands on the sick. And I know some of you guys that don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. I do. So Come on. I, I want to let you know straight up for the for the record. I believe in casting out demons because I, I do it Come and on. I see the Bible. Not even because I do it. You can call me whatever you want. But the Bible says these signs shall follow yes. them. Believe they shall speak in new tongues and they shall cast out demons. I don't know how believers today skipped over verses like Come that on. luke chapter 10 says he sent out the 70 it wasn't just the apostles and he said go and heal the sick and when he comes back 
they, they said, Jesus, the spirits are subject to Come us. On. So, so there were, there was deliverance and healing going on hand in hand. And that's a whole other topic for itself. But notice in the ministry of Jesus Christ, he was casting out demons, healing the sick. The Pharisees weren't getting attacked. It was Jesus getting attacked. Mm. They were accusing him as being a follower of Beelzebub and Anybody that's calling people to repentance, yes. calling people to a born again experience, seeking the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and for other people to experience that and operating in the gifts, open to the gifts, you're going to be a target for the enemy. And, and, and so I think that any believer that's actually practicing their faith, um, you got to be aware, uh, you got to know that um, your channel might be shut down very soon because you're a chain breaker. You're a, you're a, you're a mover and shaker in the world. If you're just one of those passive Christians that have, that you say you're a Christian, you have a Facebook channel, YouTube channel, and you're playing it safe. You're not talking about anything controversial. Come on. Um, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. That's exactly what the enemy wants. Cause you're not a threat to his kingdom. You're actually one of his friends. Yep. And, if, and if you're not bold enough to tackle the Goliaths in your life and tackle the Goliaths in the land, you know, you, you're, 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 you're just, you're, you're just being, you, I believe you're being used by the enemy to pacify the Christian faith. The Christian faith, when I read in the early, early church, especially in the book of Acts, these people were bold about their faith Come everywhere on. they went, they shared it, they casted out demons. And it wasn't just the apostles reread the book of Acts. And you're going to see that other believers evangelists, people that were not apostles were doing signs and wonders as well. We see prophetesses in, in the book of Acts. And for those of you that say that prophets are not for today, well, what about the two prophets who are going to come and prophesy for three and a half years? Come on. You got to remember as well that 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 12 and 14 reminds us that the gift of prophecy is given. It's a grace of God, Ephesians chapter four and 11 as well. It, it's a sign. It says in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon some flesh. Isaiah, was it some? Come on, come on. It was all flesh. Yes. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. It, this is speaking about the last days. And, and, and unless you have a theology that you believe that we're not in the last days, you can't deny the spiritual gifts. It's very important. So, so to answer your question, I'm sorry to go on a, a little. No, tangent. no, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. I, I think anybody that's doing mighty exploits for the Lord is going to be a target. And um, there are some amazing bold street preachers, people that are stepping out in their faith. And 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 one thing you have to understand is not a, a, we nobody has it all together. Okay. Mm. There are some things that I'm growing in. I'm sure that there's, I'm sure Isaiah, there's yep, some things he's absolutely. growing in. Um, you know, I'm just getting to know Isaiah. But one thing I like to see is believers stepping out in faith. I believe yes. that just like, a, just like Jesus said, he said, uh, we have to be like little children. You know, if we're going to be embraced in the kingdom, uh, we have to be like little children. Little children don't know it all. Come but on. little children are willing to jump into dad's hands. They're willing to 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 follow their their parents you know and 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 is that kind of attitude that i i see in certain individuals people that step out in in you know in the faith and, and i like you know i don't know too much about isaiah and i'm getting to know him but one thing i have seen is that that he's casting out demons he's believing god uh to transform people's lives i i admire everybody like that you know and you know, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, as we as we talk today, it's going to be a fun conversation. I mean, I talk with Isaiah. He, he says, man, let's talk about anything. I, I said the same thing. I mean, I'm an open book. You can hit me, you criticize me. I, I don't really care Come because on. we're brothers. And, and you know, um, you know, there might be some things that we have slight differences on. But, you know, we're growing. We're growing. Yeah. And, that, and that's what the body of Christ is. So I, I hate when I see Internet warriors or Internet trolls on on Internet. And ever since I said I'm coming on this show, I people you know i got i got people on both sides oh this that this that and and isaiah get experiences that all the time i experience yeah. that all the time and you know uh, just like isaiah you know when, when i start questioning these people and bringing the word of god to them they don't really have an answer they don't really have an answer i just brought you in just in just what i said in this short period of time so many scriptures that you have to contend with i i don't i don't i don't understand how a believer today 
could deny that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's you know, good. there were demons in Jesus's day. There's definitely demons today yeah. because it's worse today. It's worse. Look what's happening in the school system. Look yeah. what's going on in the media. I mean, demons are all over the place. Yeah. And it's not just in the world. It's in the church, too. Yeah. It, it, the Bible says that the, 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 the devil comes like a, a lion seeking whom he may devour. And he comes to steal, steal, kill and destroy. Look what he said in the book of Revelations. Uh, you know, I, I, I have this against you that you allow that woman Jezebel to teach and seduce my my servants. You have that doctrine of Balaam. You have the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. This was in the church. Look, look what was going on in first wow. in Corinthian church. We we saw a lot of things going on in the Corinthian church. What what was that all about? Now, Paul described them as saints, but yet the saints had some issues. Hmm. You know, so. You know, whatever your, your, your position on whatever side of the fence is when it comes to the, the supernatural uh, demonic activity, the Bible says that, that we should wait until we receive power from on high and we will receive the Holy Spirit. Come and on. that's when we will be witnesses. We need the Holy Spirit now more than ever. Yes. We need the Holy Spirit. And if your church doesn't... I, I mean, let me put it this way. Every church claims to believe in the Holy Spirit. But but if we mute the Holy Spirit, yeah. if we dumb down the Holy Spirit, if we put contraceptives o- over the Holy Spirit, and we say, well, Holy Spirit, you can only um, you can only do this today, but you can't do that today. You can only release this this uh, this uh, this uh, type of function in the church today, but you can't do that one today. I don't think that's our place. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather stick with the literal word of God that doesn't put a spiritual condom over the Holy Ghost than your doctrine. And I'm just going to mm-hmm. say that straight. I'm so sorry, uh, uh, Isaiah, that I went off on a tangent. No, I hope I answered your question. No, though. no, it's good. I think a lot of people like cessationists that maybe watch or listen, they say, well, you guys are all about experience. And I'm like, your doctrine, the cessationist doctrine is based off a lack of experience. So you say we base our on experience, you base yours on a lack of experience, but here's the difference. We have scripture after scripture after scripture of Jesus doing this work. I mean, look at Mark one, he starts out by casting out demons, Mark 139, he goes synagogue to synagogue, casting out demons, Matthew 10, he sends the 12, Luke 10, like you said, he sends the 72, Mark 16, all that believe, book of Acts, Acts chapter 8, Philip, the only named evangelist in scripture is casting out demons. Acts 19, Paul's casting out demons. And then they say, well, God, it calmed down towards the end of Acts. The last chapter of the book of Acts, the whole island gets supernaturally healed. So I'm like, it doesn't calm down. The fire increases all throughout church history. And so, you know, I was, I I was preaching one time in a church and I had this, like, I was going to get up to preach. And I thought, you know, they want me to preach on deliverance. I don't really want, you know, maybe I shouldn't because every time I preach, this is what they want me to preach on. Maybe I should talk about something else. And I was kind of debating whether I was going to talk about it because it was a large mega church. And I started feeling inadvertently like shame, like maybe I shouldn't talk about it's taboo. These mega churches don't want to hear about casting out devils. You know, that's spooky and scary. And then I heard the Holy Spirit whisper this to me. Why are you ashamed of me? Why are you ashamed? You're ashamed of casting out demons. You're ashamed of doing miracles. You're ashamed of speaking in tongues. You're ashamed of distinguishing of spirits or prophecy. Like think about this. When did the miracles of Jesus become shameful to where now you're considered false or bad when you believe in the things that Jesus did. It's not like we're inventing a doctrine. This is literally, Jesus did three primary things. I know I'm preaching to the choir. He casted out demons, he healed the sick, and he preached the gospel. Let me reorder that. He preached the gospel, he cast out demons, and he healed the sick. Those are the three ministries of Jesus, and he did it historically every single place he went. So if we're gonna take those, let's say, miracles and deliverance out and say, we just need to preach, So you're telling me two thirds of Jesus's ministry just doesn't matter anymore. We don't need it anymore. And then the other question is like you alluded to, well, where are there no sick people anymore? Are there no demons anymore? Did all the demons just magically leave because now cessationism's around and now this is not for today. And I was talking to Dr. Brown about this. I said, Dr. Brown, what is the best argument for cessationism? And he said, there is none. He's like, there's no good argument because it's not in the Bible and even cessationists will tell you that it's not in the, that they know there's no scripture that says it. You have to do theological gymnastics to get to a place. And I know I'm going to make people mad. It's okay. It's what else is new. You have to do theological gymnastics to get to a place. You have to take the Bible and turn it into a pretzel to where you think that Jesus can't do deliverance anymore or Jesus can't heal the sick anymore. And I honestly believe this, David, 
the world is not looking for another definition another denomination they are looking for a demonstration of the power and the presence of god there's a reason why the young generation thinks christianity is boring i would agree christianity without the power of god without born again encounters without the spirit of god filling us and changing us and delivering us and healing us is absolutely boring i look mm. at some christians i'm like yeah you are boring you go on sunday morning you let a pastor babysit you for an hour you cry that he changed your diaper you drink some coffee eat some donuts and you leave and live the unchanged life when god says i want you to die to self pick up your cross and follow after me and i think we've and i'm going on a rant here because you got me fired up but i think <laughs> we've changed it from us following jesus to now jesus follows us so now we say well we don't really want to see miracles come on jesus follow us we don't really want to see people get delivered come on jesus follow us we don't really want to preach we don't really want to go out and preach on the street or preach in our schools or preach at our jobs so we don't really have to if we don't want to yet the Christian life is doing the work Christ did. If you look at the essence of what makes you a Christian, you don't make you a Christian. You praying a prayer and inviting Jesus to build a treehouse in your heart does not make you a Christian. What makes you a Christian is you living like Christ lived, being like Christ, repenting, being born again. Like we've totally missed this. We're like, well, just pray a prayer and just come next week. No, you have to repent, friend. You have to turn from your ways and, and follow the life Jesus called us to live. And then people see, and they say, oh, that person must be a Christian because they look like Christ. And I think a lot of us look like goats and we just talk like a sheep and we think we have everyone convinced. And I'm like, man, we must be, man, and I, I know we're going off here, but who cares? We, we got to be born again. We got to have that real genuine Holy Spirit encounter. That's what I hear you preaching about. That's what I'm out here shouting. You know, every single day we got to be repent. We got to get baptized. Hello, somebody. We got to be baptized. We must be born again. You got to put your faith in Jesus. We're not saved by works. Works don't get us salvation. Works are evidence we've already received salvation the bible says it's no not by works lest any man should boast and the bible says you are workmanship prepared for good works that god has ordained like you're you've been called friend all you in the chat there's over three thousand of you on here you've been called for good works and so this is what we're trumpeting to you guys we're trying to encourage you we're trying to preach go out and do the work this is something we'll talk about here david you're not just saying but you guys are actually doing i want to first hear Share some of your testimony, and then we'll go into a little bit of Christ Forgiveness Ministry, what you guys are doing. We'll talk about evangelism, street preaching. I'll ask you some questions, all that. But man, I would love to hear. I know we're kind of going backwards here, but it's okay. This has been really good. What is your testimony? Uh, how did you get saved? How did you, you get called to the ministry? What made you start street preaching? Just feel free to lay it out for us. Man, yeah. Um, you know, when I was uh, a young teenager, I got myself involved with gangs with women with drugs um i wanted to just be accepted and and feel the love i i had a broken family um i was in a neighborhood with other young men in a broken family and and you know when, when you have a single parent mother working and all of us are just all these young men out, out in the street and you mm. want to be accepted you just you find a way to be accepted and in those days uh being a a thug was meant you you know you could fit in and, and be cool and i joined a gang uh, started stealing cars started robbing wow. home started started just doing anything i could to to get that love and and, and respect and i found myself in prison uh, more than once uh, many times uh, at least five times and uh, the last time i they didn't give me bail and and it was all it was all theft over robberies uh, charges i you know um there was a guy in in my jail cell who was a an iranian muslim and and thank thank god for evangelists um come on chaplains uh, back in those days used to give bibles in the jails and they used to have gideon's new testaments and so somehow this muslim had a new testament if it wasn't for the evangelist if it wasn't for come that on. person that went out of their way to put a bible in a jail i would i would either be dead in hell today or or you know, in jail for murder, for life. I, I don't know where I would be, but this guy had a New Testament Bible and thank God for praying mothers and praying parents. Yes. Some of you are older here today and you're, you have a son or a daughter that's either a prostitute or a son in the gang, just like I was. And you're wondering when, when, when are they going to come around? You trusted in the Lord. Well, my mother prayed she sent out prayer requests to every single Come ministry she, she she didn't discriminate the pentecostal ministry the baptist every anywhere that there was a prayer line she sent it out and it, it wasn't directly through her it was through her prayers god heard and used this muslim okay wow. out of all the, used the muslim 
to have a Bible in a cell beside me. Uh, and I happen to ask the guy because of the foundation, the seeds. Now, now, if you're an evangelist and, and you haven't seen the fruit, okay, this, this is going into so many uh, uh, dynamics here. You're a praying mother, praying father. You're planting a seed. The Bible says, train a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. So you put a seed in the heart. You may not see it bloom right now. You're an evangelist. You passed out a track. You might not see it uh, come to pass right now. You're a worker and you're living the Christian life. You're being put down and salted. They're making you work harder than everybody else. I went through it all. Guess what? You're planting a seed because when you bless those who curse you, they're going to one day. It's in their heart. They're being convicted. That seed was in my heart, which caused me to ask the guy to read a Bible. I read it. The Holy Ghost convicted me so strong. Um, I, for the first time, really saw myself as a sinner before the Lord on my way to hell. Wow. And God's spirit spoke loud and clear. He revealed the things that I needed to let go of because those are the things that caused my destruction and separated me from God. And it was women. It was easy money. It was the gang lifestyle. It, it all of that stuff and repentance was strong. I, you know, I don't know about some of you here today, but the grace that I believe God is uh, gives is the grace that is called goodness. It's goodness mm. that leads us to repentance. It's very difficult to say I, I receive a savior if you don't believe you need anything to be saved from. That's there has good. to be conviction on the inside, and that's what happened to me. Just like. Uh, you know, the jailer, uh, you know, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Or the first message in Acts chapter two, they were pricked in the heart. Mm. What, what must we do? And Peter said it uh, clearly, repent and be baptized. Now, uh, the Philippian jailer, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. But repentance and belief go hand in hand. Why? Yeah. Because when you turn away from something, that means you're turning towards something. You can't say, I believe in one thing and then hold on to the other. I, I look at Jesus Christ. Uh, when you say, I believe in Jesus Christ, you're saying you're denying the world or mm. holding on to your sin. You're saying that my sin is the savior. Everybody sins because they're looking for peace and gratification from something. They're looking for salvation from the alcohol bottle, the drugs, the women. That's what fulfills them. But 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 the born again person, the one that's convicted realizes that these things won't satisfy eternally. They Come send on. you to hell. So I don't want that savior in my life anymore. I'm willing to deny myself, pick up my cross. I'm willing to let go and follow Jesus. And so I turned my eyes from the world. God's Holy Spirit convicted me. I trusted in Jesus. I cried in the jail cell. I said, Lord, come into my heart. And, and, and jail cell, my words, come on. Weren't, my words weren't perfect. I, I, I didn't know all the, the exact sinner's prayer, the way that people have it written down. I called on the Lord and said, Lord, I, I want to give my life to you. I, I, forgive me. I'm sorry. And, you know, I, I didn't get bail right away, but I made up my mind that I'm not going back into the world. I, 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 I mm. surrender. I surrendered. God gave me that grace to surrender. He convicted me. And, and you know what? I had the, the voice of the enemy in my ear saying, you know, David, your life is messed up. Look at how many criminal records you have. Even if you gave your life to the Lord, you're never going to have a penny. You will never get wow. a job. No one will ever respect you. You've messed up every relationship. You've hurt so many women. You've, you've broken trust with your family. There's no hope for you. And look at all the connections you made. I, I was about to sell guns to other people. They were waiting on me. I, got, I, I was training people how to steal cars and to do things. And they were waiting on me to get their things sold. And I, I, I was nervous. I thought I was going to die. And, I, and, I, and man, I, I, I was so depressed. I was crying to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, what do I do? But then the spirit of the Lord was so strong. It's like, I just can't go back. Even if I get shot when I walk out of this Come gym, on. I would rather know that I'm going to be with the Lord than to, than to live safe here for what, 50 years at best, 60 years at best. I mean, that's what it really is about. Wow. I mean, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, even if, if you're fortunate, 90 years old, that's like a blink of an eye and, and not even a blink in, in, in the span of eternity. You, 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 you would, you would have like a one and, and, and one trillionth of a blink, not you, you didn't even fully blink. That's what your life is like on this earth. Wow. Okay. And imagine eternity, spending eternity in hell. So I, I made that decision. I got out. I, uh, there was a guy that tried to reach out to me. I called him. I said, I'm ready. I want to follow the Lord. 
And I mean, that, everything else from there is history. I mean, uh, man, when I think about it, it, it was a radical conversion. And, and, and this is what I believe. I believe that everybody that's uh, uh, going to make it, that's, that's a true believer, has to have an encounter with the Lord. Yes. A real encounter, a real Holy Ghost encounter. And, and you know what? Um, I, 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 when I got out of jail, I, that's all I wanted. The, the fire of God, the desire for the Lord was so strong that I was like, I need to get baptized. I, 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 I need to get baptized. I need to confirm my faith in, in every and every way. I need to tell everybody because people are going to hell. I saw it. The Bible says, unless a man is born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. He can't enter the kingdom of God. I saw the kingdom of God for the first time. And, and that also meant I saw the kingdom of darkness for the first mm. time. When my eyes were open, uh, things changed. Everything changed. My character changed. My desires changed my uh my purpose changed i i thought i was going to become a track runner football player now my desire for that faded and i'm not saying it's bad if that's what Good. god it was just now my life was all about the kingdom the bible says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you and i didn't really care i don't care and i still don't care about money i don't care about fame so if you if, if you if you've been hearing the wrong thing about me uh, I want to make it very clear. I do not care. I don't want your money. I don't care for fame. I don't even, if they take down my channel, if I can ever get a view, that's okay. As long as I'm in the will of God and I'm obedient to God and I'm going to be, I'm going to hear from Christ. Well done, good and faithful servant. That's all that matters because that's why mm. I gave my life to the Lord. The decision I made, I, I had money. Okay. I had women. I was in a gang. I was in the biggest gang at the time. I had my popularity. I was cool. You know, I, I was protected. I gave that all up. Wow. Not knowing, not knowing anything. I, 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 I said, even if I don't have a girl, I'd rather be with Jesus. Even if I don't have a penny, I don't have a job because I had so many criminal records. I didn't know I would ever get a job anyway. So I was like, that's fine. Even if I have to be homeless, even if I have to be homeless, I'd rather be homeless for 50 years and be in, be in heaven with Christ than to have a home and go to hell for eternity. Wow. Even if I have no friends, that's okay. They, you know, because when I thought about my friends anyway, they were backstabbers, they were liars. Come on. They, they'd stole from me anyway. They were wicked. I mean, I had to always prove myself. They didn't even really know me. They didn't even really like me for me. I had to put on a facade just to be accepted. I had to be bad to be accepted. But, but when I really thought about it, nobody really wanted to, to really know me. Come on. Nobody really accepted me, but one person did, Isaiah. It was Jesus Christ. Jesus accepted me. He accepted me for my ethnicity. He accepted me for my height. He accepted me just for being me. And, and, and it's not that he accepted my sin. No, he convicted me of my sin. And the reason why he didn't accept my sin wasn't because he hated me, is because he loved me. He loved me so much. He didn't want to see me destroy myself. Why would any parent accept bad behavior from their child? That doesn't mean you, some of you are struggling with something and you think, oh, you Christians, uh, you don't love me. You're a hater. No, we, we don't hate you. Maybe maybe there's some crazy people out there. They're not Christians. If any Christian hates you, he, they're not a Christian because the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, it doesn't matter if you're homosexual, it doesn't matter if you're a lesbian, it doesn't matter what Come you've on. done because I was messed up. I probably have every sin in the book. I'm not worthy. I'm still not worthy. But because of Jesus Christ, he, his blood made me clean. I'm, I'm his son. I'm a saint because of his blood. And he brought me to his, his seat. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. And, 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 it's, and, it's, and it's, it's all by grace. Mm. But he corrects you because he loves you. It's your own, is your own downfall. You see, I know so many people living in sexually loose lifestyles, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual, sexually loose lifestyles, prostitution, all of that stuff. And I can tell you, they're not happy. Yep. Um, they're not at peace. They go from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. They end up on drugs to cover up their pain. And you know, it's so sad because you will never find fulfillment out of the purpose that God has That's for it. you. You can't get peace outside of the will of God. And so if you were created this way, 
you have to understand that that's what's going to bring you happiness. I always say this, your provision is in, in your vision. And if God mm. gave you a vision, God will give you provision. He will make you happy. So, so I, yeah, I, 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 I trust in the Lord and you know what? God didn't leave me homeless. God didn't leave me alone. So I got good. my, I got my first job as a shoe store representative. It made minimum wage back in those days. It was $6 an hour. It was, it was very low, but you know what? I, I, I was, I, I praise the Lord. I treated that job as if it was, as if I had entry to a palace because I wasn't worthy. Mm. You want someone's truly saved. They know they're not worthy. I knew I wasn't worthy. So I was thankful. God put a natural joy. The Bible says in Psalms 40, he put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. He put a new song. I was thankful. And I showed up to work on time. I, I, I tucked in my shirt. I, I, I did everything I could to be an excellent steward. And I got persecuted. I got per There was a guy who knew I was a Christian and he made my job extra hard. Forgive me, Isaiah, if I'm going into too deep no, here. No, no, go ahead. It's good. But this guy, um, he was my associate manager and he persecuted me. He, he said straight up, I'm a Satanist. Wow. Uh, and uh, I know you're a Christian. I don't like Christians. And while everybody was sitting back in the back eating McDonald's, he said, go, go, go vacuum the floor, go put the clothes back up, go put box the shoes. And the anger was coming back, back in me. The flesh was about to rear its ugly head and, 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 and become that old David again. But I prayed, I prayed. And, and, and I said, God, this is not fair. And he, he pointed me to Psalms 37. He said, fret not yourself against evildoers. Evildoers doers, doers will soon be cut off. Come you saw on. them rise up like a green day tree, but suddenly you looked and they were cut down. Mm. You know, trust in the Lord do and do good. And so shall you in, uh, inherit the land. The meek will inherit the earth, the meek. And that gave me, that gave me so much confidence. And, and I'm here to tell you today that Christians in these last days are going to be persecuted. We're going to be persecuted yep. from our neighbors. We're going to be persecuted. We're going to be losing our jobs for our beliefs. We're going to be losing our channels. But yep. but but Jesus Christ will have the final say. He's coming again. And this is the gospel. Sometimes we think the gospel is only that Jesus died and was buried and rose again. But the gospel is also your salvation. He, you're, you're, we're not going to be dying anymore. We're not going to be sick Come anymore. On. We're not going to be under bondage to the corrupt uh, governments anymore. Jesus Christ is coming. The kingdom of God is at hand. And this is the gospel. It's the good news in every way. And when you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, not only will you be saved from your sins, you'll have an inheritance through the blood of Jesus Christ, but we're going to be ruling and reigning. We're going to be priests and kings with our Lord and Savior. We're going to have a new name with him. We're going to be, mm. we're going to be exalted with him. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to be lifted up. We're going to be the heads and not the tails. And already God has put that deposit in our spirit. If you've had an experience with the Lord, if you've trusted in the Lord, if you're born again, you have that witness inside. And that's why we're Come born. On. That's why I'm bold. That's why I'm bold. I have nothing to be ashamed of. Whoever's ashamed of me in this sinful and adulterous generation, I'll be ashamed of him. But if we confess him before men, the Bible says he will confess us before the father in heaven. Now, mm. if you're here today and you're saying, I want the Lord to speak to me. I want the Lord to see my situation. Guess what? There's a promise. And I want you to claim this promise. If we confess him before men, he will confess us before the Father. You want your name, your person, your family to be brought before the heavenly Father? Then declare his name. Don't so be ashamed good. of him. Confess him. Tell people about Jesus. And you know what? What I've seen, Isaiah, is the more that I've confessed Jesus, the more the gifts of the Spirit manifest. Yep. It, 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 it's, it's weird. It's like, it's like God is not going to you're never going to see the power of a gun until you get yourself into a situation where you need a gun. I mean, mm. you can be one of those police officers with your, with your gun in, 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 in the latch, but you're never going to need to use it until you, you bump into a criminal that, you know, so, so that's the key. You know, if you really want to want to know the presence of God, you know, you put yourself in the presence of God through prayer. Get yourself in church. Get yourself in the word. Confess his name before others, and you're going to see the Lord show up powerfully. So that's what so he did with good. me. And I, I know I went on a bit tangent, but. No, it's so good. Since I gave my life to the Lord, brother, things changed. I started getting dreams. 
Um, I never used to get these dreams. I got some attack dreams. The devil was trying to attack me, but but God gave me power and I rebuked those demons in, in, in my dreams. They left. Um, I started getting uh, prophecy. I started speaking in tongues. I, I remember the first day I spoke, it was amazing. Tell us about your speaking in tongues oh, experience. Man. I want to hear well, about that. I, I, uh, long story short, um, I, I went to this church that thought that they were the only church in the world. I was getting <laughs> discipled. Um, and uh, um, they asked me about my mother. My mother is a very strong Christian. She's now with the Lord today. And they said, is she a Christian? And I said, absolutely. And said, well, why doesn't she come to our church? Like, I don't know. She, she didn't hear about, you, about your church. It was a different church. And they were like, well, we're the true church. And I'm like, I don't know. You got to talk to her. You were know, the Hebrew was, Israelites by chance? Uh, no, <laughs> that's, that, that's a whole. I know. I'm kidding. That's another stream. <laughs> that's another. But um, so they said, OK, we want to talk to her mom. And, and, you know, they came to my house and there was a big debate about, you know, when are you saved and how, how you experience the Lord and. You know, my mom was baptized and, and, and you know, and everything. It, it, it just, it was, it was, they were just fighting back and forth. I, I, I was just like, look, I just want to get baptized and just follow the Lord. But they wanted me to, yep. to, to you know, renounce my mom because she doesn't go to her, their church. And, and so they didn't want to baptize me, um, you know, because I didn't want to renounce my mom. And, and I was mad at my mom. I, I was like, okay, mom, then you baptize me. She's like, no, I'm not a pastor, you know, and she's, she's old school, traditional. She's like, you know, if you're going to get baptized, it needs to be by pastor. And I, and I was like, Lord, maybe this is a curse. And I was crying to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, all the bad things I've done, please have mercy on me. And, but anyway, I kept telling people about the Lord and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get baptized. So I went to this other church. I, I signed up for the baptism, but this church is so watered down that they only get baptized <laughs> once a year. <laughs> I'm like, man, I, I mean, it, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I just, I just want to confirm my faith. I just, I just want to seal everything. I, 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 you know, saints of God, some of you just need to stop being so heady and just follow the Bible. Yes. Yes. You know, just, just follow the Bible. The Bible says, repent, believe, get baptized, get filled with the Holy ghost. Who cares? I mean, you know, just seek the Lord fill, you know, when you seek the filling of the Holy ghost, you should expect something to yes. happen yes. because God, God is real saints of God. Like if, if, if James is going to say faith without works is dead, that doesn't mean we're saved by our works. Works confirms your faith. We're saved by grace through faith. But if, if, if that's going to happen, if, if, if the Bible says in, in Hebrews chapter 11 and one, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the yep. evidence of things not seen. Why do you just settle for faith is the substance of things hoped for? and not on. expect evidence the bible says even in uh, uh hebrew chapter 11 and 6 he says whoever comes to god must believe that he is and he's a rewarder why do we yes. forget the reward why do we have Come so on. much if i believe i got eternal life so we believe eternal life comes but we don't believe there's going to be any tangible signs now now you know listen there's, there's many tangible signs in the Lord. And I think you should have them all. I think you should seek them all. I think you should grow deeper and deeper from faith to faith, glory to glory, I, until we all come to the unity of faith. And you said, so that's why some people have a deposit of faith in certain areas that's stronger than others, apostles, prophets, yeah. pastors, evangelists. But this is to edify us so that we can understand what it means to be sent. You know, some yes. people think that there's no apostles today. I, I don't I don't agree with you. Why? Come on. Because the Bible, the Bible doesn't say that. OK, mm. the Bible doesn't say that. Some of you say, well, you know, the apostles had to uh, be there at the resurrect, uh, at, 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 be witness to everything in Jesus's ministry. Well, Paul wasn't. Come on. Paul wasn't. So why is he an apostle? Why is most of the books in the New Testament about Paul? Mm. Are you going to say, well, he well, he saw the Lord? Well, you know, there's other passages in Scripture um, as well that talk about people with the apostolic anointing. For instance, Second Corinthians 8 and 23, he, he, he says, our brethren, um, they are the messengers of the churches. That's how King James puts it. But when you look in the Greek, it's actually uh, ap uh, uh, apostles of the churches. They were mm. sent. Uh, Philemon chapter two and 25 talks about apostles being the fellow soldiers and companions and labors. And, and it refers Epaphroditus as one of these apostles. Now there's, there's different types of apostles. Not all the apostles wrote new Testament books. Good, okay. So, you know, apostle Paul did, you know, Peter did, John did, but we don't hear too much about some of the others writing books as per se. And so you don't have to be a, a, an author of the Gospels or an author of the Epistle for the Church to be an apostle. You don't That's have good. to be 
a direct you were there throughout the entire ministry of Jesus the apostle. Otherwise, that would disqualify Paul. You just have to be someone with that anointing that God has sent. And the question I have for a lot of these people that don't believe in the gifts today is, well, these people that are planting churches, who sent them? Who called mm. them? Because if God doesn't speak prophetically today, then how does that person know that they were called to that position? Why did they That's plant good. a church? Was it because of their education they planted a church? Well, they're not authorized to. You need to be authorized by God. And so God puts these people, keeps them in the church. Prophet, we need prophecy. We need to be yes. edified. We need the exhortation. We need to be reminded, warned. We need that unction in the church. And that's what's yes. missing in the church. We need yep. all of that so that we come to unity of the faith. And we're not there yet. We're not there yet. I mean, if people argue about the canon of scripture. I know I'm going totally off, uh, off topic here, but people argue about that. But the thing is, people were debating about the canon of scripture all the way into the 1600s. The, the yeah. first King James Version had the Apocrypha in it, but it was removed. So, so when we talk about canon of scripture, you know, I do believe that we have scripture. I believe the 66 books. I, I 100% believe that that is scripture and it's agreed upon. But, but we have to remember that the church was was going through so many battles about that. And even the canon of scripture we have doesn't deny the gifts of the spirit. Right. So I, 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 I went to that church. Um, uh, I went, I was waiting for my baptism. I started telling people about the Lord. The guy I was telling about the Lord, he was a Rastafarian. He said, I want to give my life to Jesus. And then he found some guy. He says, "I'm getting baptized tomorrow. You want to come?" I'm like, You're "Hey, like, what? How are you getting baptized before me? Of course, I want to come." So I go to the baptism. It's this Pentecostal church. They worship God like I've never seen anybody worship come God. On. They were singing, "What a mighty God we serve!" And and I and the church I was going to did not praise God like that. They didn't mm. practice the gifts of the Spirit. But when I heard that song, "What a mighty God." The witness of that in my heart was there. The fire was there. And I, 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 I testified through my praise. That's why I said the Bible says he's going to put a new song. And he put that new song in my, my mouth, praise unto our God. And I started praising God. The spirit of the Lord took over me, Isaiah. I, I was just closing my eyes, praising God. I never praised God like this before. And then I started speaking in tongues. I was praising God. I was so Come full on. of joy. I didn't even know when the song ended, but when I opened my eyes, I was on the other side of the church. Come and on. I looked, I looked around. I'm like, oh, and then a little bit of pride got into me. I was like, what happened there? I went back to my seat. My friend got baptized. Uh, uh, and then the preacher says, is there anybody here that wants to go down in the waters? In the typical Pentecostal yeah, African yeah. style. And my heart was beating and, 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 and pride was starting to get to me because I didn't even know. First, I, 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 was, I was already speaking in tongues and on the other side of the church. And then now I don't know any, anybody of these people. And now this guy's calling me to go up into the front of the church. And it was it's a pretty big <laughs> church to get water baptized. I didn't have a change of clothes. So all of these thoughts was coming in me. Uh, the flesh was rising up. Pride was rising up. And he says, last call, last call. And I was like, Lord, why did you have to make it so hard right now? But, <laughs> but I said, you know what, this, this is my moment. And I broke my pride. I surrendered. I went to the baptism. I, like, I want to get baptized. Everybody was praising the Lord, shaking a tambourine, speaking in tongues. Uh, and, and, you know, I went down in the water. They said, why do you want to get, uh, get baptized? Because the Lord say, the Lord is amazing. I want to be with the Lord. I'm, I was just crying and, and he baptized me. And man, I felt something change, man. I, I, there was some, mm. I don't know. It's weird because people, people say, well, baptism is not important, but you know, and, and when we have all of these things, you know, but, and we do see in the book of Acts ways that people experience the spirit. We see Cornelius, he got the spirit of God. Uh, he, he spoke in tongues before he was baptized. Yeah. We, we see in Acts chapter 19, they were baptized and they didn't experience that that manifestation of speaking in tongues. And then we see, we see, you know, we see different ways things happen, but in all of these episodes, it's interesting. Everybody ended up getting baptized at the end of the That's day, good. every single person. And, and this has been a debate. I don't know why we debate about these things. Just, just do it. Jesus get baptized. Get baptized. Jesus command. He says, baptizing them in the name of the father, become disciples, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. And, 
you know, I, I believe, you know, over the years, when I think about it, what's, what's the importance of this, what happened in my life? It, you know, it's almost like, you know, you believe in God and in, in your spirit, but we're going to be resurrected physically. It's like, we're immersed yep. in our spirit and our body. We're totally submitting everything to the Lord. We're identifying with Christ. We're confirming our faith. So if you do have a faith, you definitely want to identify that faith. You want to confirm, you want to testify that faith. It, it, it's a natural leading of the Holy Spirit. And that's why I believe like when, when I see believers say, well, I don't need to get baptized. I'm fine. Do you have that witness on the inside? The Holy Ghost is not going to deny himself. He's not going to deny the words of Jesus. If you haven't been baptized yet, I suggest you do. It it clears up so much because now yes. it, 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 it lines up with the idea that faith is always manifested. And this is what I teach all the time. If you have faith, it's going to be manifest. You believe God is good, praise him. Come on. If God is in your heart, live for him. If the spirit of God is inside of you, then move by the spirit, be led of the spirit. The Bible says, whoever is led of the spirit is a child of God. So, so good. You, so, so there's always manifestation. There's always evidence. There's always confirmation. There's always experience. There's always a reward. Why? Because our God is not an idol. Our God is not a rock in Mecca. Our God is not a statue in India. Our God is real. Our God is real. He wasn't just seated on his throne. He manifested. He revealed. The Bible says no one has seen God at any time, but the only begotten who's in the bosom of the father, he revealed him. So this is our God. Our God is a God of revelation. He always shows up. He always confirms his promise. And when he says it, he will do it. And, and he, you know, and, and that's what I believe. That's what I teach. And so that's so what happened good. to me. I started getting prophecies. I started speaking in tongues. I started getting dreams. Um, I started hearing the voice of the Lord. I, I started being led of the spirit. It, it was so strong. It was so strong. I knew it was the Lord. And, and you know, there was times when I, 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 I was doubting. I'm not going to lie. I, I mean, there was times when I, I, I heard the voice of the Lord. I got a dream and my flesh rise up and said, is that really the Lord? Mm. Then God shows up that he's right. And then God had to teach me even, even when he was leading me to preach the gospel. And this is how it started. I know, I know, I, I'm, I'm, forgive me, brother. No, I, yeah, I yeah, it's good. It's God, good. Brother. But, you know, some people are like, well, how did I, how did I become so bold? How did I do? It, it didn't happen overnight. I mean, there was a boldness I had, yes, but, but to a certain capacity, God gives you a little and to, and, 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 and the little that he gives, if you can handle the little, he's going to give you more. God led me to little things in the beginning. Go tell your family. Go tell. Mm, come on, say that. And, and you know, in the beginning, there's that pride, there's that flesh. But as you yield to the spirit and you overcome the flesh, you're going to realize that God is going to see you through. God is going God is going to God is going to reward you. So, I started telling my family. My family got saved because wow. I told them. I started telling my friends. Now my 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 friends didn't follow through. They 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 stayed there. But I got boldness over my fear through just telling my friends. I remember the first day when I got out of when I got out of prison, I was I was heavily involved in, in the crime world. I was I was in gangs. I, I was I, I I thought I was gonna die. And so in the beginning, I, I was a bit, you know, I'm gonna stay lay low. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, show my face that much because what am I gonna say to these gang guys? I became a Christian, they don't care, right? Wow. One day I was going to the gym. And some of my gang friends, about 20 of them are walking through the mall and they called me by my nickname back then. And, and they said, yo, where were you, man? We heard you got a jail, man. And I was trembling in my flesh, but the Holy Ghost rose Come up in, and I told them I'm a Christian. That's all Come I said. On. I said, I'm a Christian now. I don't know where that came out because I was afraid, I, I, you know, but I didn't deny the Lord. The spirit of the Lord was strong in me. And I, all I did was allow the spirit of God to speak through me. I just, uh, you know, and the Bible says, you know, when you're brought before uh, the, the prosecutors, you're brought yep. before judges, he will give you the words to yes. say true. If you have an experience with the Lord, you have the Holy Spirit inside you. He will give you the words to say. And he did. I said it for whatever reason. The guy jumped literally just Come like you, just, just like with when Jesus said, I am he. Uh, you know, are you that Jesus? Are you that guy that everyone's, and he said, I am he. And, and the guy jumped back, almost fell back. 
no word of a lie. God is my witness. That's exactly what happened with that guy. He jumped back. I was in shock. I didn't know why he jumped back, but it was just saying Christian. Some of, some of you don't want to be called Christian anymore. You're, you're too, Come on. You're too uh, wise. You know, I, I don't know where you're getting these doctrines, but I said, I'm a Christian. And somehow even the name of Christ, I didn't even say the name of Jesus. I said, Christ, I'm a Christian. That caused the guy to jump. And he looked at me and he said, you know, that's good. And then for some reason, the angels of the Lord must have been around me. And then they just said, well, we got to go. And then they walked away. And I, man, from that day, I got a Holy Ghost boldness. I was like, praise the Lord. I got victory over my fears. I, I don't have to be afraid of my gang friends. I don't have to be afraid of getting shot. Praise the Lord. I was singing praises. And, and, and man, that propelled me to more. God started saying, okay, now I want you to share the gospel with this guy on the bus. I eventually started sharing the gospel with people on the bus. Then I started going back to school. Now I want you to share the gospel with this group of people. And I started sharing the gospel with a group of people. God used me when I was 17 years old to start a ministry in the high school. Wasn't planning on it. Didn't, wasn't looking for a platform. I was just trying to go to heaven. That's all I want. And I want to make it very clear. I do not care about platforms. I don't care about money. I don't care about fame. I really don't care. If, if God took it all away today, I would be praising his name anyway, because I know Jesus. That's that's riches. That's the only that's riches good. I need. That's that's what I need. But anyway, I I uh, I, I I went to the cat, I went to school. The Rastafarian guy that invited me to the baptism and I talked about the Lord, he said, I want you to come and tell my friends about this. I went to the cafeteria. There's about five guys sitting around in a circle, and I and I they were saying, tell us, because everybody knew me in the area as this notorious criminal. They said, what happened to you? Like, how, why did you become a Christian? I started telling my testimony and it, the spirit of the Lord took over me and I started preaching. I, I didn't even realize I was preaching. I was just in a, I didn't even know. Come I thought on. I was talking to them. I started preaching for about 40 minutes. I looked up about 200 kids. The whole cafeteria was listening to me. They were just like in awe, listening to me. And then a Muslim guy, this is how the ministry really started a Muslim guy. Cause if you watch my videos, you realize that I, I get in a lot of interactions with Muslims, a Muslim yeah. guy. I even got saved by a Muslim. I, I think, I thank every Muslim for leading me to Jesus Christ wow. <laughs> because on. it was a Muslim that gave me the new Testament. And I, I, I believed Come in the Messiah. On. So it's almost, it's, it's kind of ironic. It was like, you know, I didn't know my ministry would have a lot to do with ministering to Muslims, but a Muslim guy at the end at the back goes, well, what about Muhammad? I didn't know who that was. And I said, who's that? And he goes, he's the final prophet. And I'm like, look, I, I don't know who that is, but I know who Jesus is. Jesus is the, is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's like, well, you know, Muhammad came with the Quran. I'm like, I don't, what's that? He's like, this is the, the, the final book. And I'm like, look, man, I, I don't know what Muhammad is. I don't know who Quran. I, I don't know what that, that stuff is, but I know about the Bible and I know about Jesus. And then, then he started debating me and, and, and I was like, listen, bro, like, bro, you got a book, man. I don't know where that came from, but the Bible is the word of God. And that was the beginning of, in some way, street ministry. That day, everybody that was listening to me that was interested, they wanted to meet me again. We met five days a week, every single day. There was a hunger in the high school. These kids wanted to know about God and what God had to say every single day. And it all started simply just because I made a decision for the Lord that was real. And, and, and just think about you today, if you're listening, if you just actually surrendered to the Lord, think about the impact, the explosion Come on. that can happen in your city. This is the reason why our cities are falling apart. Come on. It's, it's, it's because the, the doctrine that is being shared out there. This watered down, lukewarm yep. Yep. doc that doesn't doesn't tell people that they can receive power. That doesn't yep. call people to repentance and true faith, conviction. Uh, doesn't call people to be radical for Jesus. I mean, if it ain't radical, if it you know, I I see radical as somebody that is literal, yeah. someone that believes exactly what Jesus Christ says. Come on, it's not a metaphor. It's not a parable. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Mark so chapter good. 1. The, that's what he said. The first commandment was repent, believe the gospel. But then he said to his disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. The last command, he said, go into all the world, 
make disciples of all nations, baptizing, yes. them, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. You know, Christians are not living out their purpose today. And yep. I think that that's why Christians are, are, are backslidden. They're tampering with sin. They're, 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 they're indulging in everything else, but Jesus is because they're not living out your purpose. Like I said before, if you're not living out your purpose, you'll never, you'll never be happy. You'll never be happy. If you're a woman and you're not trying to be a woman, you won't be happy. If you're a man, you're not trying to be a man, you won't be happy. If you're a Christian and you got the spirit inside of you, the spirit's grieved. The spirit's grieved. I decided to follow Jesus. And there was an explosion in my high school. So many ministers, people gave their lives to the Lord. And, and that was just the beginning. You know, I, 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 you know, God started giving me dreams about ministry, going into ministry, my calling, and to be honest, um, the church that, you know, I, I, I planted, um, only two to three people came for roughly eight years. Wow. Eight years. Wow. And, and, and that, that was a real test of faith because I got a vision from the Lord, uh, for Christ forgiveness ministries. And, so and you're telling I, me your channel didn't explode overnight. You didn't become famous uh, in the first man. month of you getting saved. You actually had to work and wow. be responsible with the little. So God will give you more two to three people. You said. To, I, I'm not lying. I, 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 I need I to can, get up there and preach to them, man. A lot of the times, well, for the first eight months, nobody showed up to my ministry. I preached to the wow. chair for eight wow. months. Right? And, and, you know, in the beginning I was like, am I really hearing from the Lord? But I had way too many experiences with the Lord. And this is why I always tell people like, look, it, you need to, you need to be somebody that um, has a real encounter with the Holy spirit. It's so important because yeah, because if there's no evidence that God has called you, if there's no evidence that you're a child of God, come on, um, it's going to be very difficult because, you know, I was tested. I was tested. The, the enemy was telling me, look at you. Nobody's coming to your ministry that you clearly didn't hear from the Lord. Wow. Um, my flesh was telling me, you know, David, maybe you're wasting your time. But the spirit of God inside come on. was telling me, David, keep go on. Now, I didn't understand it. I was just trying to be obedient. So I kept going on eight months. Nobody's showing up every single week. I sweep the, the aisles. I, I you know, I, it was a, in a small basement. That's incredible. I had a little a little portable pool pit. Nobody came. I just I said, you know what? I'm not going to stop praising God. The angels are here. God is here. So let me just preach. Let me just worship the Lord. Let me just sing unto the Lord. One day, some guy calls me on the phone because I started putting ads all over the the. The, the, the bus places everywhere to say, hey, we have a Bible study. One guy calls me and says, is, 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 is this uh, the Bible study? And I said, yes. And he's like, oh, I'd like to come. And I said, oh, wonderful. He said, how many people show up? And then my heart sank. <laughs> wow. I was like, you said, oh. we're the church, brother, right here. We're two more gathered. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't that bold to say that, brother, at that time. I, I said, you know, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it all depends what the Lord God has, has for the day. And then he says, what, it's like 50. And he's like, well, you know, it's a little less than that. And he said, like, okay, like 25. I'm like, you know, brother, it's not about numbers. Come on. And he goes, 10 people. I said, you know, brother, <laughs> listen, man, you know, God is good. Eh? And he said, <laughs> and, he goes, oh, and he goes like five people. I'm like, you know what, brother? <laughs> you know, I wish I could tell you how many people come, but you know, brother, we, you know, it's all, it, it's a faith walk and you know, God, <laughs> it's a faith walk. you know, and then he says, well, brother, you know, even if it's one-on-one -on -one, brother, you know, I, I, that might be what I need. I'm like, you know what, then you're in the right. <laughs> come, on. On. come on out, brother. <laughs> and man, he came on out, come he looked on. around and he says, where is everybody? I'm like, listen, brother, like I said, you know, you know, the Lord is in charge and, and you know what? Uh, that's how, that's how CFM started. And um, humble beginnings. Thank you, humble. Lord. And, and and you know it was those eight months that that tried me. If if there was ever any any flesh in it, if there was any ego in it, any any fame ambitions, selfish ambitions, if there was any desire for money, it was gone after eight months. And then when 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 the next eight years started to go on, when nobody's showing up, I get like we we there was no money coming in. There was no worship team. There was no building. There was no I I was the pastor, the evangelist, the web designer, the 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 graphic designer. I I, I was the cook. I was the cleaner. There was nobody. Whatever could have been in the flesh, God took that out. It was almost like he was just 
not only testing me, but building me up for real ministry, real mm. ministry, because he knew what was coming. Because listen, if you're not willing to serve God and Come nobody, on. if Come you're not on. willing to serve God for free, if you're not willing to serve God for and be ashamed, you're not worthy. The Bible says, yes. whoever, uh, if you love your father, mother, sister, brother, even your own life more than me, you are not worthy. You got to get out of yourself because you're not going to do mighty exploits for the Lord if you're in the flesh. You're not going to stand on a street corner. Listen, I challenge you today. Be a fool for Jesus. It's okay to be. You know what? You you never cast it out a demon before. As long as you know you're saved, as long as you know that you're a child of God Come on. and you have the Holy Spirit. If you've never laid your hands on, on the sick before, try it. You know, it's not it, 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 it's not you. It's God in you. It's the spirit of God in you. And it, we, we are not the healers. God is the healer. That's it. That's it. And for those of you that say, oh, well, the, that, that, that those are only signs of the apostles. I mean, we've already shown you, Philip. We've already shown you the 70 that went out. I mean, that's an unbiblical doctrine from the pit of hell, because Come the on. devil doesn't want you to trample on his kingdom. He doesn't want to see that's people right. get healed. He doesn't want to see people set free. Imagine if every believer believed in the God of the Bible. Come on. So good. I wanted to ask you about, so Christ Forgiveness Ministries. Sorry, you guys, brother. I've seen your YouTube channel. I know right now things are taken down and Lord willing, things will be back up, all that. But you guys have churches I'm all over the place. You guys have home groups, churches, people sh preaching on the corners. Talk to us a little bit about the ministry, all these different churches you have now, people preaching on the corner, and maybe even some of the advice you give young people. And maybe even, I know I'm adding on to this, what are some misconceptions about street preaching? Because I know, I don't think this, but I think there's a lot of people in the chat online, they think, when they hear street preaching, they think, oh, a flag or not a flag, a sign saying you're going to hell and you just sit there and you scream at people. When that's not, I've seen your videos, that's not what you guys are doing at all. You guys are actually doing the polar opposite of what I think the church looks at as street preaching. So talk to us a little bit about Christ Forgiveness Ministries, what it is or like how you guys structure and then maybe some, what are misconceptions that we've gotten wrong? Those yeah. in the chat that are well, about street preaching. Right. Many years ago, God gave me a revelation, which is what brought Christ forgiveness. Christ forgiveness was actually a Bible study uh, with an okay. acronym Christ's forgiveness. And it was it, it was a grassroots discipleship thing that the Lord gave me to reignite the the uh, flame of evangelism and discipleship and just kind of bring things into a into a proper biblical perspective. And and so what we do in CFM is is. Um, we have, we have this threefold kind of thing we do. We, we, we go out, we make disciples and we plant churches. I mean, this is what I believe every evangelist, if you're, if you're an evangelist, you should be somewhat connected somewhere or somehow have something to bring discipleship yes. so that they can be grafted into the church. I think it's a yes. holistic thing. I, I, I don't believe in this kind of, I'm isolated. I'm, I'm out there all by myself. Come on. Uh, no offense to anybody out there. I mean, God can use you, but God can use you so much more because all these people giving their life to the Lord, they they need discipleship. This yes, was one of the yes. so so we have that discipleship curriculum, and 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 it's not just a curriculum, it's not a course. It it is literally walking people through the foundations to how to how to have a solid relationship with God, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, how to, how to, how to repent of your sins, how to get free of strongholds, how to, and, and get, get deliverance, how to, how to build your faith, be a part of a community, and also how to be an ambassador for Christ. Because if Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, that means every believer is called or has the DNA of Jesus Christ. Mm. which is the fisher of men. And I think this is not effectively being taught in the church. And if it is, it's, it's not being connected properly with a, a, a discipleship kind of way where people can have mentors and, and, and do it in a, in a, in a, in a strategic organized way to actually win communities and cities. And, and so that's what we do. So we, we, we go out like someone like me would go out, preach the gospel People would give their lives to the Lord and I'd bring them together, get them discipled, strong, filled with the Holy Ghost. And we, we, we plant a small fellowship. It doesn't matter if it's in a donut store. It doesn't matter if it's in a house. It doesn't matter if someone opens up a building for us. Amen. It's not about where we meet. It's about people that have the same mind, want to 
surrender their lives to the Lord and be real disciples. So, so good. As, so let me as, interrupt you really fast. So you guys, I know people think you're just out there preaching at people and then you're just going home and doing whatever. You guys are preaching to people. People are getting saved. And then you guys are bringing them into starting churches or a local church. You're discipling them. I want to make it clear because, again, there's so much misconception that I, I hope to clear up tonight of people thinking you're, you guys are just going out there preaching and whatever happens, happens. But in reality, what maybe they don't see on the cameras or your viral videos is these people are being brought in, these people that are encountering God, getting prayer, hearing the gospel, are being brought in now to discipleship and to, and to churches that you guys are building. Is that correct? Absolutely. And the good thing about this ministry is that is that people, we're, we're, we're getting people unified again. We're getting people on the same page, one faith, and we're going out with the same thrust to make disciples, to get on the streets. Every member is trained in the same thing to be an effective witness. Now, it doesn't mean everybody's going to be a David Lynn. Not everybody's going to be a street preacher. There's yeah. so many ways to be evangelists. You can go out there and hand tracks. You can stand there. You can pray with the sick. You can believe God. You can counsel them. But we train people how to share the gospel. Because at the end of the day, you got to know what the gospel is. Yes. And as, and as we have this, this, this discipleship, uh, new church plant, um, you know, God starts releasing people in different gifts. We leadership gifts start coming out. People start start um, become getting prophetic. People start, you know, teaching. You know, things start happening, and then we start, you know, building leaders, releasing people, building from there. And um, so far, we've done that twenty four times uh, around wow. the world. We have twenty churches in the United States. We have two in the UK, two in in, in Canada. And we have, I would say, probably 10 to 15 other locations that are begging us, please come out. I mean, we have more, but people that have taken our course. So now we've expanded to the point where we have uh, discipleship courses online every six weeks, um, all throughout the year, where we train people. On, on average, you know, three, 400 people sign up for our courses That's every amazing. week. We're discipling people all over the world. Uh, we have new teachers, not just me for a long time. I was just teaching it. Now we have, we've released and, and raised up new teachers. And this is the goal. I mean, we've, we've ordained pastors. We have different, different uh, leadership in all these churches. And, and, and that's what God wants us to do. Um, he wants us to expand his kingdom, ra uh, raise up the body of Christ. And what I've seen over the years is, you know, if people are not coming online on board with us, they've been inspired to go out on the streets themselves. They've mm. new ministries have been planted. Even other churches that questioned me in the beginning, because I'm going to tell you something. When I first started street preaching, um, I was I was criticized by every Christian church, mm. everybody. People said I was doing it wrong. People said Jesus wouldn't be with a microphone. Jesus wouldn't be with a speaker. Um, but but he, here's what I'm what here's what I will say. Um, you know. Jesus Christ was out there. He was making Come disciples. On. And that's what the church isn't doing. Okay. Yeah. Whether you agree with speakers or not, the, the gospels were written in the medium that they had and it was circulated. It was spread. It was, it was preached. I, I believe if Jesus Christ had social media today, uh, he would use social media because, yeah. because God loves the world. He wants the yes. gospel, the kingdom to be preached everywhere as a witness. So, and some of you are criticizing my microphone. Well, then why are, why are you supporting preachers that are using YouTube? You say, come well, on, you know, come on. Yeah, God, Jesus wouldn't do that. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a bad argument. Okay. Yeah. Any way possible, as long as it's, it's righteous, share the gospel. Yeah. And so, so that's what we're doing. Um, we're planting churches around the world. Um, we're seeing the fruit. We're seeing people get saved. We were we were open all throughout the 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 whole last two years. I don't even want to mention the name. I don't yeah. want to yeah. anything. The last two years, we didn't shut down. We stayed open, and a lot of churches closed. But the but but I believe that how can the church close mm. when the world needs them the most? If people are really getting sick, they need yeah. the power of the gospel. If yeah. If, 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 if people are being isolated and locked up, they're going to need fellowship. They're going to need someone to visit them. Come on. So how can the church shut down at its most crucial time? And if this happens again, saints, I don't care what church you go to talk to your pastor, talk to the leaders and say, listen, 
People are dying. People are on their way to hell. They need to hear the gospel. Yes. They need us. They need us to stay open. If the hospitals are open, the church should be open. Come on. Come on. If the fire I'll trucks are open, then the then the then the people baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire need to be out there. Go ahead, brother Isaiah. So I, good. I, I, no, I love what you're saying. And when you talk about people need to hear the gospel, I just want to tell you, maybe maybe you could disagree with me. There is a quote go, going around that's been going around for years that I absolutely can't stand. And here's the quote. Preach the it. gospel. And if you it's have to working. use words, yes. I hate bro. I hate that quote more than anything because it's not what the Bible teaches. So you have a bunch of lazy Christians now that say, well, I preach the gospel with my life. That's not what Jesus said to do. Jesus said in, uh, that we need to go out and actually tell them and use our mouth, use your words to preach the gospel. Because what it does, if you believe these Christian cliche quotes, is you'll live your entire life saying, I just use my life to preach. Well, let me ask those of you in the chat. There's almost 4,000 people watching. Those of you in the chat, how many people have gotten saved, turned to Christ and repented just because they watched the way you live? Probably zero, because to get people saved, you have to proclaim the gospel. And this is what Paul said in uh, Romans 10, 14. He says, how will people call on him if they've not believed? And how will they believe if they've not heard? And how will they hear without the preacher, without the messenger? So we have to actually open our mouth, use our words to proclaim the gospel to people. Now, I understand the Bible says we're written epistles read by all men. So there is an element where my, of course, my lifestyle matters. Of course, my life is read. But don't don't skirt the fact that you, every one of you watching, yes, every one of you, according to the word of God, are called to do the work of the evangelist. We're all called to evangelize. Everybody's called to share their faith. Well, brother Isaiah, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Perfect. Share your faith with your kids. Well, brother, I'm just a police officer. Praise the Lord. Share your faith with the, your coworkers. Well, I just work at Starbucks. I got saved. I worked at Starbucks. And I had 30 minutes from 3.30 a.m. to 4 a.m. I had two coworkers, and I would put on my green apron, and I would preach to my co two coworkers for 30 minutes. That was my church. And I preached in my green apron as if it was a three-piece suit because I understood that verbally, People have to hear the gospel proclaimed. So I do, I do want to encourage those in the chat to not buy the lie that, well, I'm just going to live it out and I'm just going to be, you know, show them that I'm a Christian. Well, praise the Lord, do that, but also open your mouth and tell them the way of salvation. I, I've always thought about this. How could the news be good if you never share it? I think there's a lot of us in the chat that say, oh, this is the good news, but we never tell anybody. In my mind, I'm thinking, do you really believe the news is good? Because anytime you get a promotion, Anytime you get a new car, come on chat, where are you guys at? Anytime you get a new house, you tell everybody for months. I mean, like a year and a half, it's like, dude, the job's not new anymore. We know you got promoted a year and a half ago. You're still telling us at every family reunion. Yet we have a God who's died for us, changed us, empowered us, does miracles in our life, raises up us from spiritual death. The Bible says you were in the kingdom of darkness and God, through the shedding of Jesus's blood, transferred you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and you haven't told um. anybody and you don't tell anybody man i was the bible says that if you're not a believer i'm i know you guys don't like this it's okay praise the lord for truth if you're not a believer the bible says you are a child of satan you are children of the devil and john 1 says god gives us right to become his children so it's a privilege it's not it's not we're born children of god we are born our father being satan and a fallen nature and god says when you're born again Guess where you're born again into? A new family, a new right. realm, a new dominion, and now you're children of God. And so as God's children, what the good news, we've all, we've read these polls, David, you've read them. 90% of Christians in the last six months have never shared their faith. I just read one recently. They, they surveyed, I don't know, 10,000 Christians, something like that, don't quote me. And they said 80% of them said in the last six months, they've never shared their faith. And really oh. the poll was about Christians never share their faith faith period so i think it goes back to what we've been talking about when you don't have a born again revelation when you've never encountered god for real romans 1 16 i'm unashamed it is the power of god unto salvation that's what the word of god says so there's real supernatural power involved and that's what makes us not ashamed of the gospel i'm not ashamed because i know that the gospel i have has power I've been listening to, I've been stuck on people, these debates I've been watching about people debating, you know, is Christianity the real thing? And I don't know why I'm just, I've been watching these for the last few days. And I've been watching guy after guy debate Christianity and try to say, you know, it's the real thing. And everyone says, well, how do you know Christianity is real and it's not Islam and it's not Catholicism? And they go on and on. I have never heard anybody say it's because our Christianity, our religion, even though I hate to say it's a religion, but our faith has evidence 
John 10, Jesus said, the signs and wonders and miracles prove that we have the real thing. And none of the guys debating talk about this. I'm like, guys, the miracles, the evidence, the life change, the fact that you were addicted to heroin for 30 years, you came to an altar, were born again, and you have zero desire or withdraws. The fact that you spent years drinking alcohol every single day, and God delivers you, and you don't drink anymore. These evidences are super, the supernatural side of it are never talked about in these debates. And John 10, that's what Jesus said proves his divinity. He goes, okay, you don't believe me? Then believe the miraculous signs and wonders and not know that I'm in the Father, the Father's in me. I believe that's John 10, 38, if I'm not mistaken. But the point of it is, man, there's real power when we proclaim the gospel, when we preach the word of God. I mean, you're out there. You talk about, I don't know if demons are real. You're you're out there preaching, watching people manifest. And I've watched some of your videos where you want to talk about demons manifesting. These people are growling at you. These people are screaming and uh, speaking in demonic tongues, breaking your speaker. I mean, do you ever, I'm just asking you just from me wanting to know, do you ever fear for your life when you're out there? Because they threaten, I mean, you've probably gotten threatened to be killed, what, a hundred times, a thousand times. Every every time you're out there, they're threatening, we're going to kill you, we're going to do this. Do you fear for that? I know recently there was a guy, a, a young street preacher that caught shot. Do you ever sit there and go, man, I might be, or is there ever been a situation where you're like, man, I might actually be in danger here? Is that something that crosses your mind while you're preaching? You know, uh, somebody asked this uh, to me just like a couple of days ago. Um, they're from Sweden and they said, you know, our church, we don't evangelize, we don't go on the street. How do you do it? Aren't you afraid? And I said, afraid of what? Come on. What? Uh, you know, if, if, if you have the God that uh, opens doors and no one can shut, shuts doors that no one can open, if promotion only doesn't come from the East or from the West, but it comes from the Lord, if he's seated on his throne and is a, has authority over in all things in the heavens and the earth, then what can you be afraid of? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When David stood before Goliath, Come the reason on. why he wasn't afraid is because he had an encounter with the living God. And that's why I always tell people, look, you want to be an evangelist. You want to be a Christian, but you you better be on your knees. I don't care if you went up to the altar. You Come said, on. Prepared. But you should be getting on your knees saying, Lord, I want more. I want you to manifest in my life. I want you to confirm yourself in me. I, I, and, and if there's one confirmation, go deeper because these confirmations give you confidence to serve him in real time. And so for me, I mean, yeah, it started somewhere, I, you know, but, you know, because I had the, 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 the confirmation on the inside, it helped me overcome my fear. Everybody has that flesh ruling inside of you. But that's why the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer with thanksgiving. How do you that's be good. thankful for everything? How do you be thankful for the guy that throws you in jail? How do you be thankful for the guy that breaks your speaker? How do you be thankful for the boss mm. that uh, took away your job or the spouse that left you or the boyfriend that used you? How do you be thankful? Well, the reason why we can be thankful and be anxious for nothing, not worry about anything, is because God is on his throne and mm. all things work together for those uh, for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So if God is really on your throne, you really believe that he is. You see, whoever comes to God must believe that he is. Who is he? Who is God? He is the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He is he is greater than he that is in the world. He's the healer. He's the redeemer. Why are you afraid of cancer when you have the healer in your life? Come on. Why, why are you afraid of, uh, of a demon when, when Jesus casted every demon Come away? Come on. So what is there to be afraid of? Uh, you know, I, I, you know, when I went to jail the first time for the Lord, um, I was in the UK and a lot of people don't know I went to jail in the UK, but I went there and man, I praise God all night. It was exciting. It Come was exciting. It's one thing I've been in jail. I've been in jail for crime. Okay. And, and, and when you go to jail for crime, everybody's trying to be innocent. You're looking over your back. You're careful what you say, but when you go to jail for what's right, the presence of the Lord is so strong on you. All you do is praise God. The, the jailers actually heard me. One of the jailers came Come in on. London and she said, man of God, do you need anything to eat? And I said, why do you call me man of God? He's like, 
I watch your videos. You're doing a good job. Come on. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I was I was just rejoicing. I got bail the next day. I got rested the other day. There's one moment where um, I went and some of you might have seen this video. I was in Vancouver, B.C., and I went I, 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 I went there to preach the word of God and the whole city. I've never experienced it. the whole city was an uproar against me coming. I saw that video. Um, and um, uh, me and uh, me and the guys uh, on our team, we we started driving. There was a huge crowd. I, I would say there was about maybe 400 people just standing on a corner waiting for me to come because I said this is the corner I was going to be in. And they were like, maybe it's not a good idea that we just drop our car here because it looks like this mob is going to destroy our car and it's a rental. So it's like, like, why don't we just drive down the road and, and, and park there? So I was like, okay, that sounds like a good idea, but I'm, and, and they were like, you know, you think we should go? And I'm like, absolutely. We said, we're going, we're going to go. So anyway, we went down the road, they dropped me down the road. I get out with, with my camera guy. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm going to start preaching from here. And when I start headed that way, as soon as I got out, someone said, there he is. And then a, a, a mob so like the book of Acts this, right here. This is not only like the book. Of, this is like you see those zombie apocalypse movies and you, wow. and you stand with one zombie season. All of a sudden, it's like they had this kind of walkie talkie. They all start coming towards you. That's exactly what happened. So I started preaching. This whole mob started following me everywhere I go. And I was just preaching, preaching. Then the big crowd just stood around me. I was preaching, preaching. They, they, they basically kind of ran me out of the city, but I kept preaching. You know, anyway, the next day I go. People want to get baptized. It has nothing to do with any community. I go to the only known nearby lake. I go there. There's a huge mob waiting for me again. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with these people out in Vancouver. With it, Vancouver needs prayer. So, so when I saw the mob, people are like, you know, Dave, I don't know if this is a good idea. I'm like, what do you mean it's not a good idea? People said they want to get baptized. Of course, it's a good idea. So when I got out and I saw the huge crowd and some people started coming around, you know, a thought came to my head and it's like, this might be the day I get clubbed. Wow. Wow. I, I lived that, that crossed my head. I was like, I think today might be the day I might get raped because, because unfortunately, I, I hate to say it. And I'm not saying everybody's a rapist from this community, but everybody, most of the people, 90% were homosexuals, 95% was probably mm. homosexual. I don't know. There's flags everywhere. There was, and I, I don't know why they hated me so much. But, um, but anyway, um, I said this is they. They look violent. They look violent. They look like I'm. I'm going to be beaten down. I'm going to get beaten up. Probably going to be raped. I don't know what's going to happen to me. But for some reason, I had no fears. For some reason, I. I wow. Come I, on. I was, I was like, man, I'm going to see Jesus, man. This is great. What you know? What do you have to be afraid? Like. The whole purpose of being a Christian is to be with Jesus. So whether you live Come on. or you die, it, 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 you know, absent from the body is present with the Lord. I mean, it really doesn't matter. My, I already died at the waters of baptism. Come on. I already died. Like, I'm not even alive. And if you are worrying about your life, you need to you need to die to yourself. Yes. Get to know God. So anyway, I, I said, you know what? I'm going to walk towards that water. And baptize those who are going to baptize. As soon as I looked around, guess what? God sent police officers. I don't know where they came from because I didn't call them. I didn't call the police. Police officers said, "Sir, um, sir, um, you can see there's something going on. What What are your intentions?" I'm like, I'm going to go baptize. And it's like, okay, well, we're here to make sure that you can um, exercise your freedom. I was like, praise the Lord, because usually the police and I don't know what's going on with the police nowadays, but they they're not standing up for us. They're standing up for the other communities there. Mm. But for some reason, God wanted to make this happen. The whole contingent of the I would say there was at least 100 police officers came and stood around me. They walked me right to the waters in front of all my enemies, all those who hated me. They were chanting. They were throwing one of my guys got. Got They're hitting the silly head. string. Is that the video you're talking about? The time? silly string, sewing, throwing copy, probably probably throwing urine. I don't know what they were throwing, yelling insults, hatred. They they literally were violent, but the Lord sent angels. Come on, in in in, 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 the, in the in the in the appearance of, of of police. I don't know. They were police officers, but God sent His angels to protect me. I walk right down down to the waters. And man, it was the best experience I've ever experienced in baptism. And we baptized people in the midst of hell, man. It was mm. people just hate it, man. It was incredible. So you know what? 
once you once you sanctify the Lord in your heart, there's nothing to be afraid of. Isaiah. Come on. I wanted to say too about that clip because God used that clip to reach so many people because I saw it on somebody's TikTok page and it had like 20 million plus views on some random page and people were seeing the reality of that community, the hatred, the anger, the violence of the, you know, we won't mention the name, but the ABC, let's just call them the ABC every letter community, their hatred, their anger towards Christianity was shown. And I was reading the comments, dude, and there was 20 million views on this specific one. It was just somebody, they took your video and posted it, you know, TikTok, there was yeah. probably a hundred people posted it. And all the comments were defending Christianity. We're defending you saying, man, look, this is what's happening know. to Christians. So man, what the devil meant for bad, God <laughs> turned it around for good and made it go viral. And I know, I think it went viral on YouTube as well, but this is, this is so important. Even you guys filming, I know people say, well, you shouldn't film. Well, the Bible says, let your works, your works shine before men so they could see your works and glorify your father who's in heaven. So nobody's getting glory out of these videos that are being posted. This is bringing glory to the father. People are praising God, saying, look at what God is doing here. So I, I'm so glad you shared that. I was gonna try to share the video, but I know you guys have taken your videos down and I don't wanna you know, mess anything up there. But man, that is incredible. Let me, I know we've been live for almost two hours and I wanna respect your time. You're three hours ahead of me. So I know it's almost 11 o'clock there. I wanna ask you about one verse and then I wanna have you pray over all those in the chat. If you're in the chat right now, I know right now we have about 3,500. You're hungry to see God move. You're stirred up with this, with these stories. I would love to do in the future a part two here. I know we just, I feel like we're just getting started and we're already two hours in, but I would love to do a part two. But if you're in the chat, you say, man, I wanna be an evangelist. I wanna reach people. And really you gotta to get to a place where you're just tired of sitting around doing nothing for God. I know that sounds so like harsh and so dry, but you got to get to a place where you say, I do nothing for God. I'm not sharing with anybody. I'm not reaching out. I'm not sharing the good news, recognizing it. And, and then just don't be condemned. Don't be, oh, I'm condemned. I'm not doing anything. Humble yourself and say, Lord, I want you to use me tonight. I want you to empower me. Maybe you tonight, God will fill you with the Holy Spirit. Maybe God will empower you and use you. But before we pray, I'm going to have you pray in a minute. Let me ask you about one verse and I want your thoughts on it. Okay. All right, John yeah. 14, 12. Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these he will do because I'm going to the Father. Okay, without any, we don't know, we don't need a crazy theological breakdown. What do you think about that verse? I've heard that verse recently. It's been going like viral about people saying, oh, well, you know, Jesus was talking about numbers and administration. What are your thoughts when you immediately hear that verse? Well, I, I think it's very clear. And, and this is coming from me. This is not coming from Isaiah. This is coming from, from me and not just from me, from the word of God, Jesus Christ demonstrated through the baptism of the Holy spirit, that greater works will happen. And come on, we, we see amazing miracles, handkerchiefs, shadows, yes. um, healing people in the book of acts, um, uh, people rising, uh, from, from the dead yep. in the book of acts. We, um, we, we see, you know, authority um, over that over that woman that was uh, was bothering the apostles. Uh, authority over demons, and and we see an expansion of that. We 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 see that duplicated, magnified, even greater. And 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 I, and I think that's what Jesus means. I mean, you know, everything. If we are, if we have the Spirit of Christ in us, why do we think Christ won't be Christ in us? Come on. Ooh, that's Jesus good. Christ is in us. It, this is it, the Bible says, whoever does not have the spirit of Christ, they're none of his. It's Jesus living in you. So that means that when Jesus said in, in Luke chapter four, uh, uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. OK, did Christ call you to preach the gospel to the poor and by mm. whose authority and by by what spirit? Well, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. So the spirit in you is called to preach the gospel. This is Come one on. of the last commands, okay? Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's giving me, a, a, you know, to preach the gospel, to heal the brokenhearted. Well, we see it Luke chapter 10, Mark chapter 16, these signs shall follow them that believe. They, they will heal the sick. I mean, physical sickness, spiritual sickness, when yes. we speak the words of the Lord, this is healing. And when we administer that, and the Bible calls us ministers, saints of the Lord, ambassadors, epistles of Christ, then we are now administering healing, um, opening the eyes of the blind. Right? We already know it's God doing it. It was the, yeah. 
It was the father through the son doing it. The spirit of the Lord um, was upon him doing it. Um, it's not flesh that does it. It's the spirit of the Lord doing it. So if the spirit of Christ is inside of you, well, then obviously the grace of God is inside of you. It's going to be administered. It's almost like you're throwing seeds of grace. You're throwing the light. You're speaking the healing. You're, you're declaring the grace. You're, you're being used. And the Bible calls us a body of Christ. Okay. Mm. So God, God uses people to manifest his glory. Okay. So Jesus Christ is still alive. Okay? Yes. And given gifts unto men. First Corinthians chapter 12. We see that in first Corinthians chapter 13, 14. And, and people say, well, you know what? Love is the greatest gift. Absolutely. And it's because of love we go out. It's because of love. Yes. We lay the when you see the Bible says, you know, which father, if he loved his children, is going to give him a snake. How much more will the, will the Lord give the Holy Spirit to them that ask when we love people? We will fast and pray for them so that they get their demons out of them. We yeah. will lay hands on them. We will command that demon to leave. We will, we will, we will, we will uh, speak life to them. So this brings healing to the soul. Open eyes to the blind to set the captives free. The Bible says, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And, and, and who the sun sets free is free indeed. When we go and minister to people, whether, if you're coming from a cessationist background, if you're declaring the gospel to somebody and they get saved, what just happened? You set the captive free. Come on. You set the captive free. It was God in you that set the captive free, but you were that vessel. Yeah. So the, 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 the works of Christ are magnified and people are still getting healed today. People are still being delivered today. People are still getting saved today. I mean, look in the entire world. The gospel went all over the world. People, there's tons of testimonies, Muslims getting dreamed, people getting visions, people, you know, so that's, I, I, that's what I believe that verse is, is saying, Brother awesome. Isaiah. Awesome. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. I love asking people about that verse because it's so explicitly clear. I'm like, Jesus said, you'll do the works I've done and even greater yet. There's so much debate around this. And we've changed, we've been talking about for the last two hours, we've changed the word of God to fit into our life instead of changing our life to fit into the word of God. David, I would love before I get you off here again, I want to just say thank you for being on here for two hours. I know I told you about an hour, but you looked like you were good. You were fine with it. I appreciate it. Do me a favor before we get off here. Will you pray for the chat? Pray for those that want to become evangelists. I want to preach that God would just give them the boldness to go out and do the work. Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. And I hope we can talk some more, brother. This is amazing. Absolutely. Well, Father God, even right Lord. now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I, I'm just so thankful to you because of what you're doing. You're getting the gospel out right here. And, and Lord, I just want to declare your word. You've called us to repent. You've called us to turn from sin, turn from our wicked ways. You've called us to do that. And Lord, it's your goodness that leads us to repentance. I pray for your goodness Amen. on every person that's listening today, that you would bring them to the cross, Amen. bring them to their knees so that they would turn away from the saviors of the world and turn to you, the living savior who died, was buried and rose again. I pray that they would receive you and know you, Lord God. Father God, I pray that they would receive your gospel and get saved. I pray that they would be filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost yes. and signs would follow, Lord God. They would know that they know that they know that they are seated with you, that, that you are living within yes. them, God. They would have an intimate, born-again relationship with you as the word of the Lord calls us to do, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, not drunk with wine, but filled with the Holy Ghost. And I pray that you would lead them into all truth, O oh God, that, that Lord, their, their, their teaching would be right, their faith would be right, their doctrine would be right, but most importantly, Lord God, that they would glorify you by not being afraid. I pray for the Holy Ghost. I pray that your spirit would give them boldness, boldness to preach everywhere they go. I pray, Lord God, that you would lift off of their minds today that desire for this world, that they would see for the even the first time today that this world will fade away. The lust, the desires of this world will fade. The pleasures of sin for a season is not worth their soul. 
but Lord, they have a greater reward. They have a greater prize with you. And I pray that this mindset would enter into them, the mindset of Jesus Christ, who, although being in the form of God, humbled himself to the, to, to the, to, uh, to the point of the cross. And I yes. pray that that kind of doctrine would enter in so that they would be willing to be servants of you. And that is, Lord God, what you have given me. And I just pray that you would give that to them, that, that, that awareness of your glory the goodness of your mercy, your grace would be so strong in them that the fire would be in their bones, that you would baptize them with the fire of God, that Lord God, that they would wake up in the morning and desire to pray. They would go out and preach everywhere, not even thinking about their reputation. I pray yes. that you give them that, give them the words to say. And I pray from this podcast, oh, Father God, that Lord God, that their minds would be focused on eternal things. Lord God, and be yielded to your spirit. Cover them, oh God. Raise up mighty warriors for you, Lord. You said that those who know you would do mighty exploits, oh God. Let them be mighty in this generation. Mm -hmm. Young and old, rich and poor, black and white, a Latino, Hebrew, Jew, whatever they are. Lord God, I pray that they would understand the true gospel, the gospel that Jesus died, was buried, rose again for them, and is willing to give them the deposit of the Holy Spirit for all who ask, who all who are called, who call upon the name of the Lord. Give them that grace, oh Father. I ask all of this in the name of the, the saving name, the only name given among men whereby we must be saved in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much, man. What a powerful time. It finally happened. The collab everybody's been waiting for. Such a good time to talk with you and to just minister with you. Uh, is there anywhere that you want to just shout out where they can find you? I know it's, is it micdropvideo.com? Yeah, so, you know, we, we still will be, uh, you know, using the YouTube. So that's Christ's forgiveness on YouTube. Okay. But so Mike make sure you guys drop, subscribe to that as well. Mic drop video is where we're going to be putting all of our un uh, uh, unfiltered videos. That's where our videos are today. And we're still uploading. That's going to be our, our main channel there. So micdropvideo.com. And, um, you know, we're working in the backdrop to kind of make it like a sort of a YouTube as well. And um, but, you know, this is where you can find our videos and, and our website is Christforgiveness.com. And if you want to get involved uh, somehow, go there. You can find out our locations and but please pray for us. Please pray for us. Yes, guys. I know a lot of you have been asking, where do we find their ministry? Go to these websites, Christ Forgiveness Ministries. I've linked mic drop video down below in the description. Make sure you go subscribe to the Christ Forgiveness channel. I'm going to stay up here for another 10 to 15 minutes. So guys, don't log off here. But David, thank you so much, bro. I honor you. I appreciate you. I commend you. If there's anything we could ever do or any way we can help you in your in your journey to just continue to plant churches, preach the gospel, please don't feel, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for being on tonight. God bless you. Thank awesome. you so much. Bless you, bro. God bless. What an amazing time tonight, guys. Wow. Wow. Amazing. I want to encourage you guys to sow into this broadcast. David has not asked me for anything, but I want to give into his broadcast. If you are one of those that say, I don't really want to give, we shouldn't have preachers shouldn't ask for money. I have a word for you. Don't give, okay? That's your word. But if you want to sow into this ministry and bless what God is doing, then sow into this and I'm going to be sending him an offering and I promise you it's going to be more than you send so I'm going to be giving him more God has already told me to give him an offering for this so please help us out I'll read some of your guys donations off we have been live for almost two hours so if you're listening still on Spotify or Google or Apple podcast isaiahsalivar.com slash partner you guys can give there if you're watching this which most of you are there's links right there Isaiah, where do I find the links? They're right there. Look at that, how convenient. Or you can go to the pin links in the comment, or you can go to the links in the description. Wow, we've made it so convenient for you guys. You can literally just look there on screen and you can find the links. Thank you to those of you that are giving. And listen, you guys have been asking to have David on. I reached out to him, I reached out to him. He's, he came on and I'm listening to your guys' requests. All of you requesting to bring this person, this person, I'm reading all the thousands of comments of people you want on. I'm reading all the topics you guys want me to cover and I'm, I'm bringing on the people you guys are asking. It's a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of energy, but we're doing it. So 
Help us out by sewing into what we're doing and we won't have to ever charge in Jesus' name. We'll never have to charge for content because people sow, people bless, people give, and it's it's a, it's a better model than having to charge you guys for this content. It's better just to have people give cheerfully. That's the way to do it. We appreciate you guys doing that. Awesome, awesome. Aren't you glad you listened? Yes, of course, of course. I've been, I've been trying to get him on for a while, so I'm so grateful that he came on. It was a really, really good time. And we just flowed together. It's been two hours. It's not like that with everybody, but we, fl we just flowed together good. I mean, I literally had a list of things I wanted to ask him and talk about. We went through like two or three and we went two hours, which is amazing. Because once, once you have a guest that you could just flow with, it's much easier, it's much easier. Okay. Awesome, awesome. What do you think about, I don't know who that is. Everyone spamming the little emojis. Yes, thank you all you YouTube members. If you are a YouTube member, you can spam your little emoji in the chat. I'm spamming a bunch of them in the chat. If you're wondering where those came from, those are from the YouTube members. Do you guys like my new opening screen? How do you guys like the new opening screen? You guys like it? I like the music, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it's too loud. You guys like the new screen? I edited it a little bit, changed it up, moved the TV, made it bigger added some lights, did my nerd, put the nerd touch on it. So I don't know. I think it's cool. I like the music. I know some of you don't like it, but it's okay. If you don't like it, you can just, uh, you could just mute it when the stream starts. I still don't worry. I still have all my, all my little other things, my laptop, my phone. If you guys haven't liked the video, do me a huge favor right now. There's still 2,500 of you watching. Hit the like button really quick for me. Tap it, it's right there on the screen. The like button should be like right there on your screen. Hold on, where is it at? It's right there somewhere. Go ahead and tap the like button. That's gonna help us out tremendously right now. If you can't give, you can give a like, okay? We're picking up a like donation offering right now to see how many of you can give likes to the video. We have 2.5 thousand likes, but we had almost 4,000 on tonight. So there's still like over a thousand that haven't liked the video. So do us a favor, tap, 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 tap on the like. We really do appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for liking and thanks for enjoying my nerdiness. Cause I like it, I like to be a nerd. Bringing back the 80s, right? I was born in 91, but we, we listen. We all know the 90s was the best decade. It's like, there's no debate, there's no, well maybe everybody knows the 90 was the best decade era, time, whatever, 90s. If you're a 90s kid, type one in the chat. I like the music, I'm glad. My mom said, love you son, keep preaching the truth without, oh no mom, where'd your comment go? Her comment disappeared, you guys type too fast. Hold on, I'm gonna find it. I love you son, keep preaching the truth without reservation, God is pleased and that's all that matters. Thank you mom. I love you mom, I appreciate you, thanks for having me. I appreciate that. A lot of 90s kids, that's what I thought. I know a lot of you are born in the 90s. He was so inspirational. Yes, he was. The 90s was definitely the best. Yes, he, yes, yes, yes. 50s kid, hey, we love you too. No one streams like Isaiah. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The 90s were great, 80s and 90s, right? My mom did bring the kids back, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, she brought them back last night. She was holding them for a few days and she brought them back. So yes, the kids are back. The kids are back. Okay, let's read some of these donations. Again, I'm gonna be sending David Lynn an offering tonight, right when I get off. So again, you can monthly partner, you can become a YouTube member, you can give one time, all the good stuff. If you become a monthly partner, you get 70 sermons, not seven, 70, 25% off the merch store, all the partners calls from the past and all the links to the partners calls in the future. So that is a little bit of perks for becoming a monthly partner. Just, it's basically our way of saying thank you. Anonymous said, keep the fire burning strong. Thank you. Harry said, me and my family love you and appreciate the hard work. Thank you, Harry. Sirena, Serena, Serena Barnes said, God bless you. I love that you and David Lynn partnered. Level this up, level up for this wealth transfer. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Sirena. Karen S said, praise God for your ministry. And David Lynn, let the word of God go forth. Thank you, Karen S. Guys, I was literally sweating that entire time because our AC was like not working for some reason. It's working again now, but for some reason it wasn't working. I feel like David Lynn Isaiah mashup is the sign of the times. Hey, Jennifer said, please pray. I got your prayer request. Heather May said, I'm happy to help. Thank you, Heather. Isabel Picasso, thank you. Angela Holland, thank you. Cesar Hernandez, thank you. Ride Soul, come on, dude. You you give every single time. Said, that was so powerful. Thank you guys for having Brother David on. Such a powerful stream. Love you, bro. You're a legend. Thank you, bro. You are a legend. Uh, Monita Armstrong said, thank you for this powerful live. Thank you, Monita. I need to sit up straight. Okay, I need, 
All right, Dana, Daniel. So what a great duo. Praise God. David and Isaiah, thank you, Dana. Claudia, thank you. Familia Anderson, thank you so much for the generous donation. Familia Anderson. Fiona, thank you. Is that like the Anderson family? Is that what you're trying to say? Gwyneth Tideman, thank you so much. Yes, there's Venmo. It's on the screen. Deb, thank you so much. Clinton Terriano, say God bless. Thanks so much for having Pastor David on tonight. Back in 2020 when I committed my life to Jesus. Pastor David baptized me and seeing you together is really awesome. Hope to see a live stream with you two again. Thank you, Clint. Thank you, thank you, thank you. American Top Gunner says, tonight inspires me to preach more. Thank you, American Top Gunner. Jasenia said, thanks for everything. Please help me uh, pray. Got you. Thank you. Sorry, I had to text somebody back. Linda and Ser uh, Serafina, another amazing episode. I've been watching David Lynn's videos on Facebook, but now I know why I haven't seen the videos anymore. I thank God for what you guys do. Thank you, Linda. Daquan said, powerful stream, where did the time go? Part two, I know. I was like, it's been two hours. We just passed the two hour mark. Wanda McGee, thank you so much. Anonymous, thank you. Said, you and David have been such an inspiration teacher for me these past few months. God led me to a Bible and I'll never be the same. Thank you. Cameron Shaw, thank you. Lucas, thank you. Gage Smith. As a new pastor of a new church, David's testimony was awesome and well needed. Thanks for what you do. Thank you, Gage. Devin and Undra said, thank you, Jesus Christ. God bless you and David. Anonymous, thank you. Shawan Young said, great stream tonight. Two powerful men of God. You and David were amazing. Thank you. If you guys are wondering why I'm lip putting my tongue in my bottom lip, it's because I have braces, see? And the braces cut my lip. So I keep forgetting to put wax on them. So if you're like, why is he doing that? Is he manifesting? No, I'm not manifesting. I'm just, my lips are being cut from my braces. Okay, let's read the Venmo here. Let's read the Venmo. Thank you to everyone giving on Venmo. You guys are awesome. Awesome numbers tonight too as well. Thank you, Jesus. I just got mine off. I had Invisalign for two years and then they're like, well, there's one tooth that won't move and I've had braces now. They said for one month and my braces have been on for like six plus months. Diona, thank you. Whenever the dentist says it's only gonna be a month, don't listen to them. Melanie Edwards, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But they did put the braces on for free, which was cool because the Invisalign, you know, the Invisalign didn't work. Well, it worked kind of, but not fully how it should have. Let me see something. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to mess it up. Confetti, I got you. There's your confetti. Thank you for the donation. There's some confetti for you, for those of you asking. All right. A little confetti on the spot there. All right, we're looking at the Venmo now. Venmo, Venmo, Venmo. Angela Bliss. Thank you. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm on the public Venmo of everybody's Venmo. That's not right. Why does why is Venmo so weird? I don't want to see what people are spending their money on. Who thought this was a good idea? Thomas Morton, thank you. Great testimony. Love you. Love it. Thank you for providing great content like this. Blessing to your family. Thank you, Thomas. Ivana, thank you. Rusty, thank you. Christina Grays. Guys, if I read your first name and not your last name, it's because I stop and realize I can't pronounce it. Christina Gray said, powerful night. God bless you both. Thank you, Christina. Kamel, thank you. Dana Sisbaro said, wow, amazing. God bless David. John Stafford said, wow, tonight was fire. So good. Thank you, John. Kina Powell said, live stream was awesome. Thank you, Kina. Jonathan Campbell said, thanks for all the time and effort put in the live streams. Always good. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Irma Serrano said, such an amazing time. Thank you for both your ministries. Thank you, Irma. Paul Coe said, powerful service. God bless you, Isaiah. And super thankful for your ministry. Love you and the fam. Thank you, Paul. Brian Bowser said, thank you, Father, for using Isaiah. Jesus Christ's name is above every in the name. I pray the Holy Spirit boldness over both your lives. Thank you, Brian. Nestor Palacios, thank you, said, what an amazing time of ministry. Thank you both for the powerful message. God bless you and your family. Brooke Nicole, I was saved by watching you. Praise God for all that you're doing. I wish I found a church that preached the way you do. Brooke, thank you for sharing that. Brooke says she got saved during the videos. Thank you, Brooke Nicole. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Keep following the Lord. Stay on that straight and narrow path. Never give up. Don't let your fire die. Roxy Spencer said blessings. DV said, thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, for Isaiah and David's boldness. Praying protection over their lives and platforms. Keep pressing the good news. Grant Garibayan said, God bless you and your family, Isaiah. Thanks for all you do. You are an inspiration and your obedience. Thank you, brother. Oh, man, guys. I am sweating. I'm sweating. You want more confetti? I got you. There you go. All right. All right. All right, guys. I'm reading the chat now. Everybody relax. Okay, there's confetti on screen. It's, it's, a, it's officially a party here. Let me read the chat here. Let me read the chat here. Do the news broadcast? You want to do breaking news? 
All right, breaking news. You need to like the broadcast. If you haven't liked the broadcast, this is a public service announcement. We are live on YouTube International Television at 6 o'clock with Isaiah Saldivar. Like the broadcast, please, and thank you. Like, 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 like. Run the likes up for the algorithm. This is breaking news. Run the likes up. There you go. The music always gets me, right? Dun, dun, dun. It's like some crime show. I don't know. It's kind of funny, though. Love the confetti. Thanks. How does the deliverance map work? I'm glad you asked. People apply to be on it. The people that apply to go on the map are people that are comfortable and willing to do deliverance. And then people can go on, find somebody on the map, contact them, and they'll do deliverance on you. So anyone on the map has said they want to be on do deliverance. And listen, if you're on the deliverance map and you're not responding to people and not doing deliverance, please email us so we can take you off. Thank you. JC Strong said, God bless. Thank you, JC Strong. Thank you, Anonymous. The bobblehead needs to do it. Oh, okay. I got you guys. Here you go. This is a public service announcement. Please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. This is breaking news. You need to like the video. Don't be scared of the like button. It won't bite you. Like, 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 like. There you go. There's the bobblehead for all you that keep spamming the chat. We need a bobblehead emote. Isaiah... Is Todd White next? I am waiting on a date. They said they want he wants to be on the podcast and they don't have an open Tuesday yet. So basically we could either pre-record me boo. We could pre-record like all the, you know, I don't want to say it. That's rude. We could pre-record it and then air it. But live is just different. Isn't live better? Should we just wait to have it live? I feel like live is way better than pre-recorded. I feel like live. Let me know what you guys think. Live or pre-recorded? Pre-recorded, I could pretty much get anybody at any time to do... Well, not like get anybody, but anybody can do it because they don't have, you know, a time schedule or a schedule. But Tuesday night live? Isn't live different? Don't you think? Wait for live. Okay, yeah. Live's just different. Like, I love watching live streams, but pre-recorded, it's like, eh, I don't know. Doesn't feel the same. Doesn't feel the same. Am I the only one? I'm neutral. Live is so much better. I'm ready to see the guy that you had on tonight back. Philip Blair, I'll look him up. Paul Washer would be great. Uh, Paul Washer would not come on the broadcast. I would invite him on and have him on, but he would he would definitely not come on because he is very anti-charismatic or Pentecostal. And if you didn't know, I'm both. The Davis, John, I'm sorry, Jade, Jackie, and Donald Davis. Thank you, Davis family. We love you and appreciate you. Miss Aiden, thank you. Said, today I'm like the widow with a little money, but still giving. I gain full strength from you and the others. I'm rich in food and faith, though I've been baking food to gift with listening. Want some hunger and veggies. Thank you so much, Miss Aiden B. Miss Aiden B, thank you so much. Yeah, Paul Washer, I'm I'm not trying to shame him or hate on him, but he I guarantee, he, 100% he would not come on the broadcast. Most cessationists or reformed uh, do not associate with charismatics. They think that we're crazy because we believe in miracles and the gifts of the spirit. So... I wouldn't mind having a cessationist on, even though I'd be curious as to why they are cessationists because it's not in the Bible, but they would not come on the show. For some reason, cessation, like charismatic is like a bad term. Do you guys know? I'm going to say something, okay? Don't tell anybody. I'm going to say something very profound. God is charismatic. Ooh, what? God is charismatic. If you didn't know, yes, God is charismatic. If you don't know what charismatic is, it means you believe in the charismata, the grace gifts. These are the 1 Corinthians 12 and other gifts of the spirit that the Bible speaks of. Charismatics believe miracles are for today, gifts are for today. They did not seize with the apostles. And it's not a bad term. It's amazing to be charismatic. It means you believe in the spiritual gifts. God is charismatic. I'll say that again for those of you sitting in the back. If you didn't know, open the Bible. Put it on the billboard. All right, I got you. God is charismatic. God is charismatic. There you go. If you're down there driving, you heard it here first. Ladies and gentlemen. Mm -mm -mm. Charismatics a W. Can we get a W in the chat for the charismatics? <laughs> Say it louder. Love it. What about prosperity gospel? I don't believe in the prosperity gospel. Obviously, of course not. Does God want you to prosper? Of course but is being saved about God giving you a bunch of money and having a bunch of nice things? No. But does God bless people? Of course. I don't believe in pr poverty. 
You guys should be more scared of poverty gospel than the prosperity gospel. So you're like, I'm scared of the prosperity. I'm scared of the poverty gospel that says that God wants you poor and and like beat down and broken. What? You need to do breaking news, voice changer, and bobblehead. That will be the trifecta, won't it be? Do you have a skincare routine? Yeah, it's showering every day. That's it. That's my routine. Bring on a rapper and get their views on Jesus. Hmm. Pentecostal means you believe in Pentecost. Charismatics, Pentecostals. Pentecostals are part of the charismatic movement. So if you're Pentecostal, you're pretty much charismatic. You believe Pentecost, the baptism, the Holy Spirit, the gifts. It's, it's very similar. And I'm talking about like generalized Pentecostals. We believe in Pentecost, like the gifts of the Spirit, the power of God, the Holy Spirit filling people it, like it did in Pentecost is for today. I'm just saying, listen, 2.8 thousand likes. Wow, that's pretty good. Y'all are doing good there. Those little billboards and everything work. I'm just saying, if you don't believe in the gifts for today and miracles, deliverance, all that is for today, then you have a really, really boring Christianity. That's all I'm saying. Check out Betty Jones. Okay. Young Don next. I've reached out to Young Don, hit him up, told him if he needs anything, let me know. And I haven't heard back from him. So anyone that just became a Christian like he did a few months ago, I want to support anyone that's becoming a Christian. And I reach out to people all the time and pray for them and pray with them and help them and stuff like that, that are like new or up and coming or just got saved or whatever. How'd you choose a school for your children? It's a friend of mine's church. There's like 10 kids in the whole school. So it's pretty much like a small homeschool type thing. So we're really blessed by that. Alyssa next, right? No one responded to my deliverance application. They should have got a response in like a few days. If you didn't Merlin, send another one, please. Yeah, send another one or check if you've been accepted. Sometimes the uh, your email provider blocks us from emailing you. Bring Robin on. I don't know who Robin is. Bring Isaiah Robin. What? I'll look up Robin. It's homeschool material at the church. So yeah, it's amazing. I've been a Christian for three months. Awesome, Renee. God is charismatic. Thank you. Thank you. Did you ever get a chance to talk to the Island Boys? No, but I know somebody very well that talks to them regularly. And I found that out last week. He said, yep, I've prayed with them. I talked to them. They call me. So I have a good friend who's spirit filled on fire. The real deal who's ministering to them and talking to them on a regular basis. So the Island Boys are getting, getting the word. Whether they live it, whether they respond, they're getting it. They are getting it. Would love to see Ray Comfort on the show. I'll invite him again. I'll invite him again. Again, just remember, guys, this does not go for Ray Comfort. I don't know where he stands, but a lot of guys do not want to associate with charismatics. Just trust me. I know what I'm talking about. So they might have great teachings. You might love them, and that's all good, and I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm not saying you shouldn't love them, but they don't like to attach themselves to charismatics or be with charismatics or anything like that. Bring Torben. Torben is in jail right now. Torben's in jail right now. We need to pray for him. Okay, guys, I need to get off of here. I've been on here for two hours and 15 minutes. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Remember, oh, Yolanda H. Thank you. Said Iron Sharpens Iron. This was an encouragement. God bless you and David. L thank you so much, Yolanda. I love and appreciate all of you. Steven Bancars, guys, he will be on the show when he gets back to doing social media. He already told me he wants to be on. He just is not doing anything right now. We had like a three hour phone call that was very, very good not long ago. And so he will be on in the future. Okay. I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Remember, I will be camping. This is our last trip of the year until my kids start school. So this is like our last thing as a family trip that we're going on. I will be going camping with my family from tomorrow until Sunday night. So I will not be here on Friday to stream. I will have maybe one or two videos. So this will be my little vacation here. I'll be back Monday going hard again. Of course, Monday night we'll be preaching, which is Labor Day. Hmm. We'll see, but we probably will still be here. Tuesday we'll have podcast, and then, you know, the regular stuff that we do. Love you guys. Someone said spiritual six-pack body like a Tic Tac. That was hilarious last night. If you know, you know. Confetti before you go, I got you. I need a little button for it. There you go. Okay.
Praise the Lord. Tonight was a, a amazing, amazing night. I don't have a second channel. No, do not respond to second channel messages. I do not have a second channel. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I will see you. Where will I see you? Monday night. I'll see you, okay? Make sure you comment, like the videos, do all the good stuff. Share it with a friend or family. Love you guys. Good night. Oh, that's the wrong screen. That's the wrong screen. Hold on. That's awkward. There we go. Love you guys. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. I like the opening music better. I'm not going to lie. I like the synth wave. But you know what? If I take this outro song out, I've had this forever, you guys will probably go crazy. No Friday, I'll be camping. Unless I do a spontaneous live from my cell phone, type one in the chat if you want me to possibly do a spontaneous Q&A live stream from my cell phone while I'm camping. On YouTube only. Because Facebook hates us. night just close your information for the fanatics no I will not tell where I'm going <laughs>